Wrestling Mayhem Show. Since 2006, the pioneer in pro wrestling podcasting. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. wait. Oh, no. Oh, Hello, there you are. it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 900 and, wait a ticket here, five Tuesdays Bam. we've been uh, talking professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron in the Sorgatron Media Studios in a rainy Pittsburgh, PA. We have the window open watching for tornadoes, because that's what my app, my app just said a little bit ago. Uh, but uh, okay, so also Sorgatron on all the social medias, and uh, we have with us remotely... The the person I know who has watched professional wrestling in the Pittsburgh area uh, the longest is the Riz. It's me. It's you. It's me. That that's that's something. Uh, yeah, it's you been... are man. You were you were the one when I started going to uh, indie shows in '06. You were already there. Already there. You were. I already us... had my special seat. Like you had I already had. Seat. You I had... already had the front rows. I never got like, the dedicated covered. seat. I never got that far. <laughs> I just got a dedicated. Yeah, you got You had the contact. No, people, I ended up with. So I, I ended, you have to have the. Contacts. I didn't know the people yet, and then I got my dedicated space, space ringside with the camera. So yeah. <laughs> I guess I worked my way into it eventually. So, uh, Ray, it's good to have you here because it's a very special occasion. We have a return to the show, a return to wrestling in recent mm-hmm. months. Right? No, Year, no, no. Years, years starting. Years. Years. Started. Well, there's, a, there's that there's that black hole, there's COVID, yeah, you know, and stuff like that. Back on the show, I didn't adjust this camera. We'll just do that live. We're just doing it all live here. Hey, it's a live show, guys. Nope, not too low. Hello. Glenn Spector. Yo. The current big boss, former Wonder Man. A former Wonder Man. Former Wonder Man. Uh, famously Wonder Man. Famously. Famously. Famous. Infamously Big infamously Boss. Infamously Big <laughs> Boss. Excellent. Good to have you on the show here. I think we had you in like, it had to been like 08 or something around the Devil Budokan show. I should look no. it up. No. We, uh, Did you have another like. We had, you had me in um, when Devil, when, when we, when uh, the book for Devil Budokan was released. Oh. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I did do the Devil Budokan show, like one of the most important things I ever did in wrestling. But like, uh, but the, yeah, we, we, we did a great little show for the, for the book. And I really appreciate that. And uh, I partially blame you for bringing me back to, oh, no. <laughs> because, oh. because once again, being, being uh, on shows like this and stuff like that, you know, it, it totally brought me back to wanting to do this again. That was the uh, that was the 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 off time, and that that gave you the bug, right? Oh, everything gave me the bug. Like, uh, but honestly, uh, uh, Bobby brought me back more than anything. Like he, uh, he he kind of realized that um, I had a lot of unfinished business, and I needed to be back. Mm-hmm. And I'm really happy to be back. That's good to have you back, and it's been an entertaining journey so far. You popped up on a lot of uh, uh, my radar in recent months. Yeah, so yeah. To me, it's a return. Uh, mm-hmm. So, uh, but anyways, uh, but we'll get into that. And if people don't know, we'll get into the history and 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 uh, and, and have some fun here the, tonight. But of course, it is leading into WrestleMania. Uh, there's a lot of talk around that, and uh, you know, other news uh, to get through. And 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 since we barely talked wrestling last week, because we did Patreon on the bank, we had Matt in his big board of craziness happening here it's funny if you missed it uh, uh we did actually talk about wrestling on talking mayhem mania so we kind of did a switch switcheroo there uh so go check that out or a lot of those clips are popping up on the social media and tiktoks and we should have released that yesterday like what's that an april we should have released that like yesterday and make it like an <laughs> april fool's joke here's, a, here's everything we wanted to say about wrestling last week on april fool's i think yeah. I, did, I didn't release it until like friday or something anyway so you know uh, it, it's been a busy week i just finished graphics for mayhem mania like earlier today so. am i the only person who now feels you can't post anything on april 1st anyway oh yeah because yeah. oh, it's yeah. just like it's terrible i was like so i just got off this amazing month i wrestled somewhere between nine and ten shows like nine ten matches nine and ten separate shows which was is, is a big month in wrestling um and 
I was going to post this like heartfelt, like what a great, <laughs> like I, like I'm so lucky to be here. What a great thing. Thank you to all these people. And I'm like, is this going to come off? Like I'm joking with people? It's going to come off like you're fake retiring. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> is what it'd be. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out if this uh, Kevin Smith dogma re-release is real or not from yesterday. Because mm. I'm like, oh, don't fuck with my emotions like this. So <laughs> I want the I I am still holding, clutching my DVD copy of Dogma. Please give me a streaming highlighted. I just option. watched Clerks again yeah. for like the 1500th time. Oh, yeah, and I still yeah, yeah. think it like I, I this is probably blasphemous because it's his first movie, right? But I, I still think it's his best movie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. It's the most raw kind of thing. Yeah, I, that's what I like. It's, it's, Same way I like music, like uh, like Andy, a lot of bands. Their first album is the best album. Absolutely, I like the I like stuff that's emotional, raw, unrefined. If you love the the angry band and being angry, and then they get the the successful thing, mm. and like they can't replicate that anymore, uh, right? Metallica, Kill 'Em All. Yeah, exactly. Not that the other albums weren't great. Disturbed, but Kill First em all. Disturbed yeah, album. Yeah, yeah. Never the same one. afterwards. Godsmack. Uh, all those kinds of things. Mm. You know, the the it's all emotion. And I guess you kind of get that with wrestling a little bit too. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. People kind of level off at a certain I, it's point. It's funny because that'll dovetail really nicely into the into the CM Punk talk. <laughs> Speaking of which, most of us watched an interview yesterday. I started again. God, the the uh, I think it was the Mayhem Show Facebook group chat was blowing up. It was like you see what CM Punk saying, or somebody mm -hmm. was messaging me or something. Right. I was like, okay, and it was still live when I found out. Like I think they were talking to Rhea Ripley at the time, like afterwards. Uh, so I backed that thing up, and I was listening to it between between editing podcasts. I was listening to it for the rest of the day. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, he's going a lot of places. Um, so this is a, a Kiwani. Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar. I guess it, it, it's an MMA podcast, I yes. guess, right? Um, and he's had him on before and knows him from when, you know, during the U, uh, UFC days. And I guess he, I guess he was uh, recently announcing uh, 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 something, some other MMA show or, mm. or maybe that's the old one because I ended up pulling up an old interview at first <laughs> and I got confused. Um, but anyways, so there was pretty much the biggest tell all CM Punk interview uh, on Monday. And of course, a part of the whole media blitz, you know, going into WrestleMania this week, I, I was watching a live stream earlier today of a, uh, of a, a cheesecake, cheesesteak and pizza eating contest in involved almost Otis, Big E and, and Tazawa. Oh, they're dipping into the glow <laughs> handbook. <laughs> is that the they're glow handbook? Oh, my, one of my, I think it's where yep. the up, up, down, down, but yeah. So the funniest thing is like, uh, with me for wrestling is like, people are like, Oh, would you grow up watching? You know what I mean? Especially because my style, I think is a uh, very old school NWA style wrestling. Like that's how I work and stuff like that. Um, but honestly, I grew up on WWF and glow. Uh, but one of my most memorable, the thing, the reason I bring that up is because uh, the glow thing that stands out the most to me is Big Biker Mama and Mount Fuji. What was the stipulation of the match? No match. Pete's eating contest. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to show the cover here. I'm, I don't want to show it too much of it so we don't get a takedown. But we'll just show a little bit of a still there of what's going on. That is good technique, by the way. That is just good technique. That is good technique. I think it was uh, uh, almost in Tazawa versus Otis. Otis is was, awesome, I by think the way, just a... in general. I just love his work. I really do. You know what? He's he's a spectacle. He's a big guy that can do some stuff. Yeah, he's entertaining. And he, the he thing fits is, he's so got, well there. He's he's very got a got a, he's got a, like a solid idea of what his character is. And absolutely, it's, it's always on display. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I feel, how much of that is just him? Yes, you know, it has to be just that's just him turned up because he's that all the and, time, right? And, and they tried to like they they tried to dim it down a little bit when he first joined mm -hmm. the Alpha Academy. And then all of a sudden it like snowballed into, it's just Otis now. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just, he's just, he's just the old just, Otis we loved with Chad Gable. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> for, who for we also love. a phenomenal yeah. guy in general oh, geez, also yes. in terms of like, work, uh, you know, in the ring work. But, but same thing, he can still, he's not just a workhorse, he's a character. He's like a, a real total package kind mm -hmm. of guy. If Chad Gable was uh, brought in uh, uh, five years earlier, mm -hmm. I think he would have been on a Kurt Angle trajectory. I, I, I still wonder why he's not booked like Kurt Angle right now. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. what I mean, Is it his size? Like, is, they did the Shorty G thing for a while, but, things like that. But Kurt Angle, is like all these guys, like, like at the, you know, people, if you think back to the Attitude Era, a lot of these guys weren't tall, mm -mm. you know? Mm -mm. But but also like but it's in an era where they did have the six point fivers you sure. know like it was pretty but, much the standard on the on the on the on the high end I thought but those champions weren't like like that though mm -hmm. I mean you had your big shows and all that stuff but 
their champions were like The Rock or or Triple H, who were They're normally tall, sized. Six, four, six, like, five, six yeah. normal size for, yeah. for, yeah, yeah. for wrestlers. Like, I think 6465 was like the average. <laughs> but I mean, like, for Guerrero, the last yeah. time. But, but, you know, Guerrero held the belt at that point at some mm-hmm. point. And then, um, so there Ray. were guys that were, that yeah. were like, you know, in and the that's f- what I say. They, they, you, popped in, range. you popped into the age Jericho. where Jericho, when Jericho, Mysterio, Jericho, yeah. Eddie were getting, were getting, and you popped in the uh, Chad Gable. I think he would, he would, you know, with that persona and everything and, and, and that enthusiasm, or not enthusiasm, but the uh, charisma, you know, I, I think he would have shot, shot up that, with, yeah, that, with, that, with that stuff. You know, if he would have hit that like Heyman era SmackDown, no question, no question he would have been in the mix on the top. But if so, you ask me like what, you know, what in the Fed do you like watching right now? Alpha Academy is very high on my list. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Entertaining across the board. Even this whole like. Uh, the cruddy thing that happened to Maxine where people were like booing her and that she can't wrestle and things like that. Cause she literally like, I think she's only a few matches in yeah, yeah. and they have her on raw, which of course, you know, that's, that's going to be a tough spot uh, for anybody, but you know, they're turning that into story. They're turning that into mm-hmm. something like they're, I, I, this, 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 we'll get back to CM Punk in a moment. And, and, and just, I watched Raw for the first time in a month just because of timing. Uh, I've been watching the YouTube clips and, and ta- hearing you guys, uh, all, all everybody else on the show in the chats, talking about how on fire that three-hour Raw has been lately, right? Like, and you can see it and the energy. It is, like, the and, and the more I see this, the more I see highest gate for a televised show for WWE <laughs> in Brooklyn last night, right? They, what did they say? 13 sellouts in a row? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sellouts and of this, arenas. And at the end of the day, this goes to show, like, like you know, they know what they're doing. I, I personally, like so many people, I do wish there was a little more going on in the ring sure. on the, for a three-hour show. Sure. But I, you can't argue with success either. You can't. But, but personally for me, I would like more stuff going absolutely, on. Absolutely, absolutely. But but there's, there's so much more, and it just feels like uh, uh, that whole, you know, I keep thinking about who's in charge now and who's not, you know. And, and, and that we have been watching WWE that's been really an audience of one, mm-hmm. right? And we just digest it or don't. And, and I feel like, you know, the, this is Paul was right about everything you know? it definitely like it, was that vince was steering them in a bad direction at that point mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, that's not to say mm-hmm. like once again i mean like you know i, I always say this with a grain of salt because these guys those guys are wherever they are mm-hmm. which don't get me wrong i wouldn't want to be where vince is right now but like right, <laughs> but, right. But, but those guys in general i'm talking about in terms of success those guys are where they are i'm mm-hmm. where i am mm-hmm. so i i never like to say uh oh well i know you know i know what i'm talking about but like I said, the, uh, it's not to say that I don't have any, any criticisms of WWE, mm-hmm. but I definitely think they turned a corner. Absolutely. Like, because there was a point where I think we all were, well, I, I, wouldn't, I don't want to speak for you guys, but there was a point where it definitely was not fun to watch. Mm-hmm. I, stopped, yeah. I kind of stopped watching it for like, leading into the first time Vince got booted out and, and Paul seemed to be taking over mm-hmm. uh, that wrestle there, that summer slam where they brought back like Dakota Kai and things like that. Right. That was the Brock Lesnar uh, tractor ring yeah. situation. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like that was the like, Oh, what's going to happen? And it felt different and it felt more different. And you saw like Paul seemed to be triple H seemed to be uh, uh, healing the wounds and bringing back the people that we don't even know why they were let go and doing so much with them. And cause <laughs> I, I, you know, he sees the potential that the big boss was never able to uh, because he comes from a different angle, right? And, yeah. and I think that's a big thing. So I, I, I don't know if it's like there's that groundwork happening now. I do wonder what's, uh, you know, how much of what is happening now that has skyrocketed things is The Rock, how much of it is the TKO, and mm. now there's a different uh, brain trust that knows how to do very big events with mm-hmm. the UFC is now applying some of that to what WWE already does very, very well. And just, I think they just tighten the screws on some things. There's a good discussion on the group today about how there are no, um, other than I think SummerSlam that's going to be in Cleveland. So we're all going to that, right? It's only a two hour drive. I mean, mm-hmm. that seems like a day trip to be. Um, I do, I do, I do the same thing for uh, an indie show. So why not SummerSlam? Uh, you know, you know, everything else, nothing is domestic. Yeah. None of the big shows are domestic. You're talking Paris. You're talking Australia. They're talking about uh, Clash in the Castle just got announced again in I think June. Uh, 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 Money in the Banks is in uh, 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 in Canada. So like they're doing like the big events are going to big places 
and it feels like every country is kind of getting a, a WrestleMania at this point. Which is a good thing in terms Great of... Great business. Uh, yeah, once again, you want to expand all these markets. You want to, you want to, you want to sell your wrestling to as many people as possible. Um, and I, but I would also point out, I don't think it's just The Rock coming back because big guys coming back is a tradition in WWE. Sure. I, I, I think it's the way he came back. Mm -hmm. This very much feels like a return to form of the Attitude Era. And as a huge fan of the Attitude Era, mm -hmm. uh, with all of its warts and all, mm -hmm. um, and it's not just, I want to be clear, um, it's not just The Rock saying fuck on live television. <laughs> That's not the, that's not, that, that's, don't get me wrong, that's a part of it because once again, it, I, as strange as it sounds, being bleeped adds a certain degree of realism. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, AEW played this trick too. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the Attitude Era, it, it, like I said, it, 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 it has its own feel. And when The Rock cut that promo uh, with Seth Rollins in the audience and, and um, you know, with the, uh, like, um, and and that whole thing from Raw, like he, it really felt like an it felt like an Attitude Era promo. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just it's not just that the Rock's there because obviously he's like one of the kings of the Attitude Era. One of the if you if we did a four pillars of the Attitude oh, Era, yeah, yeah, yeah. he would be mm -hmm. one of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it's not just that he's there; uh, it's the way he is presenting himself. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's I think it's bringing people back in. And, 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 and what happened feels like a, a little bit, a little pinch of what happened with with, with uh, Brian Danielson uh, about ten years ago, mm -hmm. right? A little pinch of like you know you wonder how much, and we'll get the story someday down the line about how much was the plan was going to be this, but we redirected redirected this, and oh my god, it was a good decision, yeah. right? What they're doing now is, I think, you know, whether on purpose. Um, on purpose or not, and I'll go to an antidote here. That uh, 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 anecdote, anecdote here, anecdote here that that I think I brought up on the show before. Um, but you know, it, it's 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 dovetailed into this thing that became even bigger to the point where I'm like, <clears throat> this seems too big for Philadelphia to be a WrestleMania. <laughs> to be quite honest, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, nothing against Philadelphia, but it just feels like this feels like this should have been an LA WrestleMania or something. The way that it's grown, you know. And also, Philly for 40 feels really weird to me. Um, anyways, but though Spectrum Wrestling, wrestling at the Spectrum, you know, uh, like at the Philadelphia Spectrum. Mm. Like there's, there's, oh, it's a, it's a big wrestling town. Don't get me wrong. There's a yeah. history there for what it's Absolutely. worth. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but like, you know, to the point where is this, was this uh, uh, the plan all along? Was this an act, happy accident and we knew when to shift it to in our favor when it wasn't going to go our way? Well, it's one thing, like, you know, you know the old the old regime maybe ha would have shoved this through and said, this is my WrestleMania. But now it's like, hey, we should do it this way. And I think we can do this, this, and this. Um, I, I, I've talked several times about a show that happened last month. I think it's the only show you weren't on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where I'll still pretend I know what we're doing. I watched I watched the storyteller, the booker of this show, play this crowd like a fucking fiddle. They did a bait and switch with the star that came in on the match. Did a, you know, did it, did, you know, did a, do you want to see this happen next time? This wouldn't happen with so-and-so was here. You guys mm -hmm. probably figure out what show I'm talking about if mm -hmm. you're there. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm just like, I, and, and I happened to be by the DVD booth watching in the crowd this time. And I was like, cause so I could, I felt all the reactions of this very hot, usually very dedicated crowd. And I was like, oh my God, I'm watching, like everything is obvious, but everything is like the crowd is in. The crowd is so in and and played up and being worked up to a fever pitch right mm -hmm. and that's what i feel is happening obviously on a grander scale um i think it's a i, I think it's a very special skill if you do that in a room of 300 people or versus you know three million people i either way i don't care how many people if you're able to control a crowd like that or social media <laughs> even more so yeah like that's very impressive to me yeah oh absolutely um, and I, I, I definitely think you're onto something there too, in terms of, I, I, there's no way to know. I, I, and I'm, and I'm sure in some ways that oh, this was the plan all along, mm -hmm. but I do, once again, I get a, I get, I get a feeling at least that, that the current WWE is more adaptable. Mm -hmm. Like you said, mm -hmm. they're, they're less nimble, like, nimble, if you will, they're less likely to just take a storyline that's failing and jam it down your throat. Mm -hmm. You know, I and, haven't and, seen, oh, so go ahead, Chris. I was going to say, and we're seeing that. 
with what they're doing with uh, Drew and with Seth and with Punk, like they all three of them hate each other, but that story can grow and grow and grow into something years down the line if they want to keep it that long. Absolutely. But, go ahead. <clears throat> I was gonna say, but it, it's like we have to see. We have to wait and see for it. Yeah. And it's building, so it's it's amazing. It's it's amazing to see how the, Drew McIntyre, CM Punk might be WrestleMania a year from now. That's how long. Absolutely. That's how long yes. term. That's how long term. Worst this might case, be SummerSlam. You know. You know, or Clash at the Castle. Clash at the Castle. Right. Ooh. They might. I, if I, I honestly, unless unless the the crowd was really hot, like like, well, they are really hot for it. So like, uh, I don't want to sound like an idiot right now. Um, they are hot for it. But what I mean is, I don't know if I'd hot shot it. I like it might be worth not letting them cut like physically touch each other for a year i'm dead mm-hmm. serious you know it, it might be uh but once again that's the kind of the that's the old school part of me like talking because i also know that now things are different in terms of well we got to give people stuff a little earlier like yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. like we it's can't hard it's hard it. to drag a storyline out for 12 months i don't know ask cordy Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Does anybody feel like you know? I I I I hope I hope everything works out for him. Or, <laughs> I really it's so funny because a year ago we we're like, what do you mean this is maybe not the end of the story? And now it comes back around. I was like, oh my God, this could be well, the, the greatest story, the, right? Uh, maybe maybe not. I got to be honest with you. I I love Cody's work in terms of his in the ring work. His promos, eh. They're all right. I don't. I like you know. Once again, when I say they're all right, take it from a guy who uh, is working the indies. Like you know, <laughs> the, the one in three hundred people. Uh, right. Venues. Like I, I feel like my promos are, are top tier, but at the same yeah. time, like you know, it's just a different thing. Like I, like I, but I, I, I am a big fan of his in the ring work, and his promos are good. Like they're you know they're they're just I just don't think in when you're in that when you're when we're talking about the the top tier of promos. Like, and he's always going to get compared to Dusty, which is so rough mm-hmm. because Dusty's the best, yeah. you know, one of the best guys on the stick who ever lived. Um, but uh, my evaluation of, of the greatness of Cody Rhodes aside, I just, it's weird because maybe this is all going to work out, but I have to say I'm less interested in it than I was last year. Now, yes. my, now mm-hmm. I will say maybe I'm the only one, mm-hmm. Be- but, you know. It's this, because of the Rock situation. Yeah. That I'm does almost, not help. It, 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 it's the <laughs> Rock being in this match. It's the Rock being in this match, and then also it's the tag match in night one, mm. which is it, which is three other people in that in that match. Let Dude. me be so controversial, really quick. <clears throat> okay. Right? Okay. My fantasy booking. If we rewind the clock a year, okay, I wanted Sami Zayn to beat Roman Reigns, and I wanted it to be Sami Zayn against Cody Rhodes. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Because I just uh, like, and it's not, it's not a, it's not a diss on Roman because he's doing a great job. But I just, I like, it, I'm, I really like Sami Zayn's work a ton, and I felt like his that was really his moment, mm-hmm. and he never got it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, once again, I'm sure he's, I'm sure, I'm sure that he goes to sleep on his pillow, made a hundred dollar bills, just, <laughs> just fine, just fine. So when I say this, I don't think he's like, I'm, I'm sure there's no sour grapes there. I'm just saying I would have loved to that. If you remember the energy of the pay-per-view where he wrestled Roman, uh, Oh my God. The energy mm. was, was electric. It was, it and was like, crazy. And the match was fantastic. Yeah. And it just yeah. like, uh, just like, I was just, I really thought that maybe I was like, maybe they'll take a chance on this crazy, weird looking guy mm-hmm. to like, <laughs> let him carry the belt who, with, who also like is a very natural talker. Yep. What he feels very, that's what I'm talking about. Like my favorite promos. Um, and this is why, like, even though I like the rock and I think he's a superstar, his promos aren't my favorite because they still kind of feel manufactured in a certain sense, mm-hmm. very catchphrasey and stuff like that. Um, Whereas Sami Zayn, when he talks, it feels like it's your, like, this is, this guy's talking to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Very direct, like he's looking at you in the eyes, right? It just feels real. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, it, it's interesting. And maybe in an era where Roman, this, this Roman reign, Roman's reign. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. How's that? How have they, how have they not done that? Yeah, right. Um, you know, and plus we have the extra step because apparently in the interview on the uh, biography they did in Roman Reigns on A&E on Sunday, these are weird words that are getting put together. I can't believe I'm saying in 2024. Um, they say, he said if he loses on Sunday, he's gone. 
Oh, I mean, <laughs> well, well earned vacation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, give him some ch- chance to be with his. He's family. gonna take yeah. some time off. Is yeah. what's gonna happen. I'll, so here's the thing. He's gonna he's gonna get that <laughs> vacation Moxley never got. We're, we're stuck <laughs> in the same position though that we were last year in WrestleMania in terms of. <laughs> You know, there's this desire to tw- to to throw in a twist, mm-hmm. okay, with any WrestleMania finish, right? But how does he not like if he do- if like what happens to Cody if he doesn't win it this time? Yeah, oh yeah, my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it really. Sucks. What is it? Is he gonna like a John Cena? He loses for a whole year or something or something? Like who knows? Who knows? Right? Right. But. There's so much to work with this. There's so, I, I feel like there are a lot of places you can go, even if he doesn't win. But man, you're gonna buy the ticket to go see if he can win. Well, yeah, right? Yeah. You're, you're mm-hmm. like, like they got us. <laughs> they, they fucking I got us. The, the entire front row better throw rubber chickens in the ring if he wins. <laughs> there's like, there's a. <laughs> they uh, should uh, sell rubber chickens at the concession stand. Oh my god, there better be a WrestleMania finish the story rubber the chicken, chicken T-shirt. Yeah. If there is, I will buy one. Okay, oh, I just if they sold WrestleMania rubber chickens, I'd order one right now. <laughs> yes. I'm not even kidding. Like that's I'm I'm I I you know like, like I'm 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 still enough of a mark to want that. Uh, Partners in the right. chat. And he says if Cody loses, it might just be a riot in Philadelphia. Right. Yes, they riot yes. if they're happy. If he wins, there that might the problem, be a riot in pa- in, Pins, in Philadelphia. I, I was I was about to say as like, as a guy who grew up in Philly, uh, you know, <laughs> they're gonna riot whether he wins or loses. <laughs> it's gonna be a very careful walk to the car afterwards oh no brotherly love's gonna be on me right now because i crap on philly all the time as, ah, fuck uh, it. And no 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 but here's <laughs> the thing but i but i but but they were always gonna secretly reveal that i actually was born in philadelphia <laughs> <laughs> ah they can stick the whiz somewhere no now they now, now I, I spoiled it for you sorry cliff Sorry, Ricky. <laughs> I ruined it. Blowing the spot. Hey, guys, uh, real quick, and we'll get to CM Punk here in a moment. Hey, we started. We tried to start, but... Uh, I'm so excited to talk about CM Punk. He's my favorite wrestler. <laughs> he said with extreme sarcasm. <laughs> As a guy who worked uh, several shows with CM Punk in the, a couple several. decades ago, <laughs> more than several. <laughs> Anyways, we'll get to that in a moment. But in uh-huh. the meantime, I want to thank our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wrestling medium show. You guys were fucking wild. The things I had to pull, there's a there's a waffle, birthday waffle on the graphics we're going to show later today <laughs> because of you guys out there. But thank you, everybody that does support the show. And, of course, we do do uh, the uh, Patreon uh-huh. extra. Yeah, I know, Riz. Um, <laughs> we do the Patreon extra that you guys get exclusively, of course. Uh, but thank you to everybody that does support the show. Our guys, our friends at the fan of the show level, Bo Diggity! Woo! Woo! As well as Team Hammerfist and the Tupac family. At the Poppy Club level, Dave Prof Mob Potter. Uh, spouse at Rooster Radio Fair at RoosterRadioFair.com and Rats and Insurance Code Tony Kincaid and as somebody who saw Poppy live last Monday uh, definitely uh, stick keep, keeping the Poppy Club level around uh, Pizza Club level Doc Remedy The Riz hey that's you and Lance Fisher I do like pizza <laughs> yeah, it's a pizza manager level Bradley and the mad one himself thank you everybody for supporting the show you can too at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show and we'll see what we can get Glenn controversial what we can get uh, Glenn Spector to say after uh, we go off hair here for you guys on Petri- Patreon. Can I just say that was a fantastic read? Like, you, you're you very good at that. Because I do the same read every <laughs> fucking week. I know, but still, there's a talent to it. <laughs> it's a, I was, I, yeah, you know, that's why I, and I hide behind the camera. Uh, sell that, most man. Times. Sell it. Sell the what? Somebody asked me once, uh, I forget what I was doing, but they were like, do you do you, do you you have radio training? I'm like, no, I've done a podcast every week for like two decades. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> just like wrestling, man, you can't, there's not, no, there's, Nothing like reps. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to go into radio because it's dying. Um, sorry, friends. That's just started a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, actually, well, I actually have friends that they are podcasters and and uh, they started taking the podcast to radio, but they still keep it as a podcast. Uh, so I mean that that's really cool. That's really fucking cool. Our friends at Yeah Jag Off, I'll, I'll throw a shout out there. Actually, oh, yeah, yeah. Dutters was just on them. I think I was on their show once. Oh, are you serious? I'm dead serious. <laughs> The, the, the Jagoff podcast? I, I, Jagoff.com? I, I, hold on. Let me text my oh, wife. No. Oh, I, no. Like, I think I was on the show for my store, though. Oh, wow. Of let me, let me, let well, me well, you just meant the, the, the yeah, it was so. The, well, Dutter, was, I, we'll I feel, throw this out. Dude, that's not, by the way, I'm not big lot leaking you guys at your Jagoff. Like, I just, dude, I am CT'd out from getting dropped on my oh, head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I, I don't remember what happened. Not, I literally don't leaking. remember what I did last uh, my, week my on the show. My wife is watching the show and she said, yes, you were. <laughs> 
there, she, dude, she also keeps my entire wrestling schedule for me. That's, that's fantastic. how I know where I'm booked and when. That's why my wife is my business partner because I'm like, don't make sure stuff is is crossed and mm-hmm. teed and oh, and I don't dude. get in trouble for something. I would live, literally be living in the gutter if it wasn't for my wife. She because <laughs> not because I don't have ability, but because I can't keep anything straight. I can't remember any dates. She she does all that stuff. For how me. about a side note? These 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 white claws are strong. These are not bad. <laughs> These are like, I'm yeah. feeling this and I'm just going to, it's a problem because I have to edit before I drive tomorrow. Uh, anyways, what was I doing? Oh no. I need to see um, punk. CM punk. Riz, CM punk. Riz, you watched yeah. this interview. Did you watch the entire interview or clips? And what, does oh, your vi- clips. and what is your vibe of this interview? You probably first, only got the juicy parts. First of all, I really want to say something. Uh, I want to know where I can get that Bret Hart wrestle buddy. That was behind First him the of, entire time. Was an, I it, thought that was some interesting placement there. Yes. <laughs> as as, I, I believe as he the held dude with for... the Hulk Hogan wrestle buddy in the background, I see I see the 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 kindred spirit here. Yes. I am I'm a big fan of wrestle buddies. I think I had They're two of them great. when I was a kid. Yep. By the way, uh, Joe Dabrowski, you'll see up at WrestleCon this weekend. Uh, but I saw his table at Pit Fight a couple weeks ago, and he does have Virgil wrestle buddy. He's my wrestle buddy. What? Yeah. <laughs> He's everybody's what, Joe, Dombrowski, Joe, Joe Dombrowski is your wrestle buddy? <laughs> He's mine too. <laughs> I love Joe and he knows it. Yes, I... I took him on his first road trip. <laughs> That's so many road trips. He brought Joe. two pieces of white bread in a plastic bag. <laughs> and, he, and he swears now he doesn't remember that. <laughs> Everybody, but I'm telling you, it's true. Everybody who's Ziploc watching Ziploc sandwich bag this big, two pieces of white bread. Everybody that's watching the show right now, please tweet Joe Dombrowski on Twitter and say, mm-hmm. just say two pieces of white bread in a plastic bag. In a Ziploc bag. bag. In a Ziploc bag or something. I, 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 like, now please, here's the please thing. Please do that. I'm the one who got dropped, dropped on his head, not him. <laughs> He swears that that wasn't the case. I he we both he he acknowledges that I am the person who took him on his first road trip, but uh, he swears that wasn't the case. But I swear to you, he had it. He had a, a, a Ziploc bag, two piece of white bread. Anyways, Riz. Yeah. <laughs> aside from the wrestle buddy uh, bling, do you just want to talk about it? Yeah, let's. Yeah, we're talking talk about, about it. Jack? I feel like we've been teasing it for twenty the, minutes. The Jack Perry thing here. What the? Oh, um, the, yeah, yeah. What's the Jack Perry news? Real glass. So, yeah, real glass. Um, so I, I'm and I'm in agreement here with Punk on this one. Uh, so the story went that, was it two, like a week before All Out, um, there, he was brought in. He, he, uh, I think it was Shivani asked him to go tell Jack Perry to not do it. Because he told everybody it, else to fuck off, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. allegedly. Allegedly. We should say allegedly. This is one we, one side of the story, yeah. like for and whatever whole, you say. Yeah. And it that is, and it is, is CM Punk. Yeah, let's be, let's be real. Um, but he's saying that allegedly, he told Punk was told that or was asked if uh, Jack Perry can smash a rent a car. First of all, no, no, no. He was asked to talk to him to tell him not to do it because everybody yeah. else told him not to do it. Yeah, and and he. he Allegedly. 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 Um, so he told him no, I believe. After after telling Shivani and everybody else that please don't do this. I mean, please don't bring me into this because it's only going to be bad from here. Um <clears throat> turns out. So turns out it got worse. Um so and they after after it happened, he told after he asked him, he said no like why would like i i, I guess they really like, they actually do respect punk there because they actually asked him mm-hmm. up front about this i think some of them you know <clears throat> some of them did him. yeah mm-hmm. um but <clears throat> i do like how he had his own show like that entire time it was it, it was, what we it was now based yeah. on yeah, his that, show. I, yeah i i that 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 uh, that's crazy to me. That's mm-hmm. absolutely insane to me. Uh, like it does speak a little bit to like, uh, I do not understand. You have to, if you, if you own a wrestling company and like, look, once again, I can't argue with Tony Khan's success as a human being and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so take everything. And, and for, a, okay. And what, a, my and, only and, caveat. And AVW has been 
a relatively successful company. And I like considering. it. Considering, yeah. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, You know, like, I, I, sure. I find things to like in all these. Look, I'm the wrong person to ask because I basically watch wrestling from the 70s and 80s on YouTube most of the time. <laughs> I watch at least I watch at least two to three matches a day, uh-huh. but they're all just me watching stuff that I watched when I was a kid. Yeah. Like, but because that's what I really mm-hmm. like. No, but I do watch, I try to keep up with all the modern stuff too for obvious reasons. Um, but uh, the the thing about when you you have to have a forceful personality to deal with all these other forceful personalities. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you've ever been in a wrestling locker room, for those of you listening that, that haven't been in a wrestling locker room, we're a bunch of passionate, crazy, uh, tested up like people who are. We we have a vision for our characters. We have a vision for what we want to do. This is it, this is a hard thing to wrangle, especially if you have a bunch like very few people get into wrestling like that aren't passionate about wrestling. There's just a million easier ways to make money. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't love wrestling, you're probably not in it or you're probably, it's a freak accident. Like you're, you just happen to be such a phenomenal look or such a phenomenal athlete or whatever. And, and even those people tend to fall in love with it eventually. Like, and the, so when I, when I think about the interview, the part that rings true is I just wonder if Tony Khan has a hard time because he's clearly a fan mm-hmm. bringing the hammer down mm-hmm. and saying, Hey guys, mm-hmm. I am the reason this company exists. You all live and die on my word. So we're going to do things my way. Mm-hmm. He has a lot of vets in his back room. So he's got Arn, he's got uh, Malenko. Um, there, there's a lot of guys back there. Uh, what is it? You got Jerry Lynn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, there, more than uh, there's probably Sanjay Punk was in a supervisory role. Right. Like, Brian Danielson's in a supervisor role now with a collision. I understand. So there are people yeah. he theoretically can be like, I need you to go in, and if he doesn't feel comfortable bringing the hammer down, yeah, like that he could authorize to bring a hammer down. But at some point, you have to have like a big meeting and say like, these are my hammers, mm-hmm. and if you are too much of a stuck up out of the ground nail, mm-hmm. you're gonna get smashed by these people if you don't do your job yeah and 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 there, there always has to be a lingering threat of like I, like this is the one thing that wwe probably did right with the talent i'm and as talent i hate it don't get me wrong mm-hmm. and this is why we need to have mo- like we need to have more competition so people can leave go get money elsewhere and 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 and, and, and i always say when somebody leaves wwe it's not that they couldn't cut it it's they were not compatible like in a corporate structure in a personality structure but maybe they can thrive in an aew because they're they're allowed to do x and y or be x and y or communicate with x and y that they couldn't any other space Be- because the talent aren't the only people who are wrong mm-hmm. sometimes the management's wrong absolutely and you have to leave and have another place to go yeah. but i will say if you're if you're a manage if you're part of management and management has a vision and this person doesn't fit in the vision like you know mm-hmm. uh i think sometimes you have to just bring the hammer down and say like hey like it's not the right time whatever blah blah, blah. like the i i i understand that um as much as i've been look i've been on the other side sure. of that i've been on the other side of that hammer plenty of times mm-hmm. like and so it's you know and i'm happy to go work somewhere else yeah. if necessary uh and there are other places that might fit your character's vision or whatever that are better for you that are going to be better vehicles for you and hopefully you can make some money too you know but um, <laughs> there's a wink there for everybody on audio the uh but my my um that's my impression I, I got from it is that I do think that punk was like, it's uh, I'm the last person to baby face CM punk. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I will say that interview made me feel kind of baby face towards him because mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff in it that rang true. Um, just really quick on the, on the Perry thing, like uh great, you know, like these guys are all great workers. Like, mm-hmm. so right, right off the bat. And like my, I, I kept, I keep hinting, hinting at this CM punk thing and we'll get into it at some point. But um, every anybody watching this who's a wrestler, who's a friend of mine, knows I'm not the biggest fan of Phil. Mm-hmm. Uh, I and and the difference between his big pivot in the in the interview was like these people who don't like me are internet trolls who uh, <laughs> see my character and oh I, you don't understand the magician behind the veil like I'm mm-hmm. I, it's all machinations I'm just working everybody no like he's really hard to work with and he can be a uh, like a douchebag mm-hmm. like and that part is very real and the part that I think that's interesting because he kind of disclosed it a lot is like his uh 
desire to kind of cause trouble and start fights and things like that. Like, here's the thing. You can't be involved in this many backstage fights and it not become a pattern. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's the part that's funny is even in all of his disclosure that I think is honest and actually probably accurate. And, and like I said, that, that interview baby faces him to me to a certain degree. Sure. Please, everybody, you know, watching this, like, remember, this guy has been in a lot of backstage altercations, um, you know, and I, like I said, including, uh, including the situation that made him leave WWE. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this idea, uh, you know, that this idea that, that, um, that he approaches everything, you know, that, that like it's the, it's, oh no, it's everybody else. Dude, if you're getting into like 17 different fights in these big money promotions, it's not just those other people. It's probably you. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. he carries himself in a way that, you know, look, Teddy Hart, <laughs> like that whole situation. <laughs> think, no, seriously though. Yeah, but yeah. think about no, every person, you're... people who like CM Punk reported that, that, that it was CM Punk's fault. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the, the, he has a personality issue yeah. in terms of the way he approaches people. Look, everybody in wrestling, all, all these, the, like, I'm, I, I mean, like I am kind of gendering this cause I'm talking about the guys specifically because yeah. they're the guys who are kind of tested up and, 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 then, and that's where you have the experience with is, is, yeah. is the guy part of the locker room. Right. Look, so we're going to, every so guy, in on that. every guy has a line. Mm-hmm. And if you cross that line, mm-hmm. it's going to get physical. Mm-hmm. And he knows that. Mm-hmm. And yet he crosses the line with these people. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. on him. So I think that's important. Like as much as I think that interview baby faced him and I think he has a lot of great points. And once again, my dislike for him is not because I'm an internet troll. It is literally firsthand. Mm. Phil, I don't like you. Now, uh, (laughs) that doesn't, here's the thing. That doesn't matter because this is like M. Bison in the Street Fighter movie. Like for Phil, it was Tuesday. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like it, like, like, like it, he doesn't know who I am. And, it, you know, my just in, in background, uh, a CM Punk uh, was a, a pretty good fixture here in the Pittsburgh area in the, in the early, the mid 2000s. He was on uh, like, uh, uh, and, yeah. and all up and down the East Coast. So when oh, I yeah, was yeah. all, when I was all up and down the East Coast, same, I, like I, yeah. encou- I encountered him on many shows. Yeah. Um, my impression of him was always the same. Like yeah. he had a he had a chip on his shoulder. Hmm? Um, everybody says like you know oh well now he has this. No, he always had a vision. And this for, is him t- like twenty ish years ago. Yeah. So like like the, the changes and maybe he's not completely the he, way that you remember. But so so just he, just putting that asterisk on thing. But this is from your own experience. Well, it's funny because there's mm-hmm. so many things in the interview that he said that actually resonate with me, and that's yeah. why like I was like starting to like like him because I truly believe like my view of wrestling has changed in the fact that, so let's bring this all the way back around to Jack Perry. Cause I'm, I'm kind of rambling and I do that and I apologize. Right. Um, yep. the real glass thing, very <laughs> talked about on the internet guys. I have news for you when your talent on the level that these guys are wrestling, the money that is involved, you, nobody should be going through real glass. No, Mm-mm. that is not controversial. Mm-hmm. Okay, people should not be doing stuff with fire. <laughs> like, re- you know, if you look at my like when I talk to promoters about that want to book me, one of my things is no glass, no fire. Mm-hmm. There is no way to predict how g- real glass is going to break, mm-hmm. and I find fire to be completely unpredictable. Mm-hmm. Like, and and so if I can't, here's you know, the thing, you know, I, also sex getting also sex is getting uh, gasoline on your SDI cords or video cords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna say that from experience. I, I've bumped. <laughs> I, I now I've 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 bumped. Uh, you know, on tables, I've bumped on uh, tacks. I, like, it's, this isn't a thing where I'm like, oh, my precious. It's a bu-. known quantity. But but yeah, but I know what's gonna happen when that happens. My my thing about this glass thing is like guys, if like think about the Nick Gage issue when he got the when he got the light tube mm-hmm. stuck in the side of his body and he almost died. If I'm investing or or, or G Raver or Arquette. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm investing a hundred thousand dollars a year, which is small potatoes for some of these guys, mm-hmm. if I'm investing a hundred thousand dollars in you as a worker, mm-hmm. piece of glass goes through your side and you're on the shelf for six months. How am I profiting? Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It is absurd to think that wrestling on this level, and honestly, I, don't, I, I certainly, since I think about it on that level, I don't think we should be doing it on the lower level either. Because, <laughs> you shouldn't be doing it for 20 bucks either. Well, yeah. because once again, if you're, so hey, uh, message to all the indie wrestlers out there, not that I know anything, or, or, or not that I know anything at all, but 
if the most important thing for you is to get your reps in so that you can be ready for when you get your tryout at WWE or AEW, uh, what happens when you're on the shelf for six months because a piece of glass goes through your like aorta? Like th this is, you know, you have to think wrestling. Like I, when when I train people now, mm -hmm. I'm like, you have to think about your longevity. This is like. You know, your your most lucrative years might be in your 40s. That's my plan. This is like, <laughs> this, this, this is like the extension of the bump card conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like if you're if you're taking out that time and you're not accumulating that, you know, with the reps and the bumps and everything, like that's that's yeah, that's that's leaving that on the table, right? Yeah. yeah. And, one, and once again, I, you know, it's it, look if you love King of the Deathmatch stuff, and for all the King of De like, there are guys who do Deathmatch stuff with glass and stuff like that mm -hmm. that I absolutely respect. Yeah. I just think they're great guys. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, uh, Matt Cardona just wrestled uh, Edge. Yeah. Like I, I love Matt Cardona. Yeah. I think he's a great worker. I think everything. I think he is doing everything right. But I still don't get the deathmatch stuff. It's yeah. just not for me. I think it was. Um. I can't remember if it was if Joey Janela was. God, did we interview Joey Janela? I can't remember. I feel like we did. Uh. But I could be maybe with something maybe else. a while back I'm maybe, not like sure. back with the super indie thing or something um or conversations or interview i heard or something like that maybe actually no i think it was him on Cole Cabana. um see i literally don't know if i've talked to people on this show oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i remember like oh shit we did talk to keith lee or something like that it like come pops in my head out of nowhere but anyways like i remember the conversation because remember when he missed a a super indie here in town because it was when he did that thing where somebody took him with off zandig? with it was zandig, zandig off of a roof through a into a pickup yeah. truck full of glass and all kinds of stuff right <clears throat> now here's the worst part mm -hmm. i don't remember that at all <laughs> so so i so, remember it because he wasn't here no but but here's my point yeah so what was the point of doing it so and, and everybody it, remembers right. hell in a cell views yeah everybody remembers hell in a cell sure people who never saw it i saw it live not you know um well i say i, I saw it live on pay-per-view i was yes i was in my friend's apartment in oh. pittsburgh i didn't have <laughs> I money was... i didn't have enough money to go actually see the show but my but my point is like everybody remembers hell in a cell so sure. okay so that that cashed in and it was the right thing to do right but but the reality is we have people doing stuff more dangerous than that now mm -hmm. and nobody sees it and nobody remembers it. Mm -hmm. So what the hell is the point? Yeah. yeah but, but, and for him, he was talking about like, Hey, th this looks super dangerous, but it's a calculated risk, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But you can tell that you can make that argument as somebody that does that. Um, you know, uh, I, again, you know, going back to that, I remember a crazy clockwork orange match that I, I got to produce a year ago, maybe a week between, um, uh, Matt justice and Bobby Beverly. Um, in, 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 in LA and I, it was free on YouTube. I don't know if anybody was talking about it. I don't know, but I remember them just bleeding everywhere afterwards. I remember a very scary, almost problem that happened when they came off the ropes, a foot caught a chain and I'm like, he's dead. He's, this is it. Yeah. Right. I just filmed it. <clears throat> um, and to Matt just is just pulling blood on top of his hand. Like this ain't right. Right. Mm -hmm. I was like, nah, man. Uh, so <laughs> like, like something like that, you know, I mean, it's one of a million things that happened WrestleMania weekend. I don't know if it broke. You know, I don't know what they got out of it. It, right? it is yeah. wild to me because I saw what, like um, I've seen and I love and I don't love those guys by the way. And, I, and yeah. it was a lot of fun, dude. It was scary fun, but it was a lot of fun to witness this thing. And I'm not a stranger to deathmatch wrestling, filming, etc. I will not hire one of my people to do it though. I will yeah. put myself in danger, but I will not do that. I respect what they do in the ring mm -hmm. because I know it's dangerous and I know it requires toughness, mm -hmm. but I don't think it is a good idea and my, well, and listen, my wrestling and, as a whole is a bad idea and, so sure, you have sure, to start sure. there <laughs> but here's the thing we all know what indie paydays are like right yeah, yeah do you know how much money it would cost for if you said to me, if you said to me glenn i want to hit you with a with a weed whacker <laughs> i'm dude i filmed mm -hmm. one of these spots three months ago dude uh you want to hit me with a weed whacker mm -hmm. all right uh like a couple thousand bucks mm -hmm. i'm not doing this for 50 bucks are you out of your mind mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. why like to pop fifty people, mm -hmm. you're insane. Mm -hmm. Like and and look, like I said, I I I, I have a lot of respect for the insane, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Like like at the at the end of the day, and people are like, you know, oh, is it all about the money? Look, I'm, if I wouldn't be in indie wrestling if it was all about the money, it's also but, your body. But I am all about creating moments, and I don't think you need to hit me with a weed whacker to create a great wrestling moment. Mm -hmm. I remember two people's. I remember standoffs more than I remember. Any like guy getting hit with a 
with a sledgehammer or any mm. like it, it's just wild for me. We you know we, we should I, also I'm not a, we should all subscribe to the Jock yeah. Samson School of Wrestling. <laughs> where yes. where uh, Scott uh, Jock Samson has this innate ability and and skill to to do a match and get the greatest reactions out of a crowd with doing the absolute least physical activity. And it's <laughs> fucking beautiful to watch when you know Jock and I on. get along really well. And I, I think oh, I couldn't imagine. I why. think that's that and our love of alcohol is probably <laughs> like. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I I think we've we, we've gone a lot of different directions with this, but we do need to move on because I gotta talk. We gotta talk about you, man. Oh, but sure. in the meantime, uh, speaking of uh, Glenn Spectre's on like just about every show we've done in the last month over at Wrestling dot US, uh, a prolific, if you will. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you can check it out. VCW, 2PW, our friends over at 88 Wrestling, of course, live every Thursday. Now, we will not have a live show programming out. We will not, we will, um, due to logistic issues with the venue, uh, we are not able to live stream. Um, it was, it's time. It's not It's not the connection. It's time uh, yeah. with the venue. Uh, I cannot set up an entire show in an hour. I'm sorry. Uh, but anyways, but please, if you're in Philadelphia, go check out 88. We will have cameras there. We'll be filming it uh, for, uh, you know, uh, ideally to come to IndieWrestling.us in the next week. But that's okay. There's plenty of other things to watch this week, so I don't think we'll be a stream that's happening. But we'll return, of course, next week uh, with the Thursday Night Fights, 880 Wrestling. Uh, the No Ring stuff is up there as well um, on the YouTube page. We are just dropping, speaking of VCW, started this last Sunday and going straight through until Sweet Victory. That's coming up on July. Uh, what month is this? This is April. April 14th, I believe it is. Uh, check uh, VCW's page for the final date. Uh, but anyways, um, we are doing VCW Finish Line. It's uh, some special tapings that we did uh, here that, that are uh, coming out over the next week or so. Uh, so go check that out, um, you know, uh, featuring all your VCW favorites over the Everybody except for Glenn Spector. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, but no, go check that out. It's a lot of fun uh, uh, with these. A lot of really good matches are going to be coming up in this in a different kind of environment than you usually see with VCW, and you can see what's happening there. Uh, I believe, uh, let's see, this is uh, Tuesday. I think the third match has dropped, and it's every day at 7 p.m. on the YouTube and Facebook for IndieWrestling.us. You can go check that out. And uh, what else is coming up? 2PW, uh, also another program we note on that. 2PW will not be streamed because, unfortunately, um, we are every other place in the country that we can. But again, we'll be filmed. We'll be on IndieWrestling.us. VCW will be live this month. RWA will be live this month. 880 later in the month will be uh, uh, live this month. Uh, so we do have a lot. And potentially some new stuff and new promotions might be coming to IndieWrestling.us. Perhaps. Including something in Erie that's under a new name. Sure. Uh, so uh, a lot of stuff going on there. We should have we should have McChesney on to talk about the new show. Actually, in the ne- in the next few weeks, that would probably be a good get, if you will. I mean, I don't know. He's too busy being on the news program up there and everything. Oh, yeah, no, so I mean, big a, big time, big as time, they say. big eerie mayor, uh, the mayor of eerie, if you will. Big league. <laughs> Big League. Uh, no, actually, yeah, it's a revenge wrestling. Oh, yeah, well, I got it backwards. Big Times Bill Collier. Big League. Yeah. Yes, no, that's absolutely different. <laughs> so, and not in a feud with Kid Yorkette. No. Uh, so, have you seen those, by the way? Uh, Bill Collier was in a feud with Katie Arquette. I, I, I saw stills. I and it's one match. of my favorite intergender matches of all time. Huh. I know, right? Uh, I like like and and I remember the controversy like ten years ago with National Pro Wrestling Day. Natural Pro Wrestling Day. Thank you. It's an old gimmick we is did. That, is that an actual thing? Yeah, it was a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Char- it was a thing. The Char- back people in the... were going. We went out there uh, representing one of the local companies with McChesney and some guy that rocks drifts with a look, guitar now all over the place. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and 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 uh, uh, yeah. So so um, there was a, a tag match with Ego Fantastico and somebody else and like two big guys and two small girls and it was like an intergender tag match and then they just like destroyed the girls at the end and it was really awkward. So that really distaste the, indie, the intergender wrestling thing, you know, but you know, obviously it's a lot different these days. Uh, but no, that was, that I was worried, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, Ugh, is this going to be one of those weird, you know, uncomfortable intergender matches? But man, it was the main event hmm. of the show. And we're in, in that sports center that they're doing up in the area where they're drawing like 800 people now. It's 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 fantastic. But uh, team well, big. I got nothing to say 
but that's I got I got I got nothing but good things to say about Bill Collier and Kater Academy. Absolutely. So it doesn't surprise mm-hmm. me. I would say if anybody's like, like, if anybody's going to right, pull well, off I mean, the best like, intergender match you've seen, it's probably those two. Right? Uh, Bill Collier is probably <laughs> one of those guys who like once again like he could have a good match with a broom, like and the good news is. Katie Arquette is basically the the girl equivalent of that as well. So now you have two people who are actually honest to God, great workers in the ring. And so how could they not have a good match? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh God. Tina just brought up Atticus and Valentine Casanova Valentine from last year. Mania weekend. That's where I got blood in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, this all is, over me. My wife's nightmare is guys. like other people. I'm like, just like, if I bleed, it's not that big of a deal. But like, like other people's uh, blood on me. Uh, is a I went to a wrestling show and got Addis Coker in my mouth. Ah. Yeah, no, it was gross. It was absolutely gross. But God, it was a good time. I'm gonna, I'll be honest. It was dangerous as fuck, but it was a good fucking time. It was like being in a mosh pit with a five thousand dollar camera, and definitely feeling like you're in danger most of the time. And but I'm a mosh pit guy. I love that shit. Oh sure, sure. I, like this, I, I couldn't get wrestling, so that's my danger zone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. wrestling didn't work for me. I tried. I gotta, I, you know, that's my, that's my, the, the mosh pits and now no rings are what I love so to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna springboard off of your uh, cheap plugs uh, and also say, um, I'm, I'm gonna be on the two W two PW show, mm-hmm. and I'm wrestling my longtime rival. And since we we pull the curtain back a little bit on sure. this show, and friend, uh, Troy Lords, but uh, but in this case, rival, I'm coming for you, Troy. You know that you failed me for the last time at pit fight. <laughs> so now it's serious business um and and uh and also uh uh these are great shows i mean they really are great shows and then the vcw like uh it is such a great show mm-hmm. top to bottom mm-hmm. there is something here's the thing about victory championship wrestling uh there is something for literally every kind of wrestling fan on that show mm-hmm. whether you like just straight up good wrestling, whether you like gimmick matches, like whether you like promos, whatever your like thing about wrestling is, uh, it is shoved into that show. I was excited to, to join their crew. And then my first spot was a thing where, where I, I, I was in the audience for an interview segment and stuff like that. And so I got to sit and be an audience member for like the first three matches. I saw just the craziest stuff, including a really amazing blindfold match. And I told the guys afterwards, I said like, it's my favorite blindfold match. It It literally is (laughs) Jake and, uh, Jake, you know, uh, um, Jake and Rick Martell is my favorite blindfold match. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. 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 That's, but I, I literally grabbed them after the show and I said, just so you know, this is now my second favorite blindfold. (laughs) Like, like, and, and here's the thing that Izzy Lambert and Allridge, right? Yeah. Yeah. They Mm. pulled that off and it's, a super difficult actual match to pull off mm-hmm. because there's a lot of weird selling. Mm-hmm. Are we allowed to talk? Well, I got, yeah, 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 yeah. This is a non kayfabe yeah. show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a ton of weird selling mm-hmm. in a match like that. And if you don't nail it, it's over. And mm-hmm. they literally did not fail in any regard. Mm-hmm. I was riveted by that match. For what, like, like it, there was so much good character work. I, I swear to God, it's one of those like little indie gems that probably not enough people have seen. And really, it's one of the. It should have been mimetic, but like it just didn't. You know, it's one of those things that like I feel like if people if people see it, they'll like. It. If it happened WrestleMania weekend on the collective, it would have shot up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those things that like, and, yeah. and that's the thing. You that, know, so, maybe we should put it out there. Maybe we should put it out for free then. Yeah, maybe, maybe that should be a drop here. We're actually going to be doing. We actually uh, on the break uh, for you guys on video. We're going to be doing a few. Uh, uh, promos from that show. You know, uh, I got that in every yeah, Spectre yeah. match. Cause we, when, there the, you go. when I'm on, when I'm on the camera, baby, the ratings go up. I also appreciate it though, too, because I've been really, I've been really happy to see our friend Eamon, uh, uh, involved with that promotion. And that's somebody who, who we know, uh, from this show, from the time he was like, 15 or 16 mm-hmm. uh, on this show. And that's a shoot him. name. Whose shoot name is it? Eamon. The, the one that Eamon. talked to you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're an interviewer from that show. I believe. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I told you about getting hit on the head, right? Yeah. 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 Right, no. Good. No. We're bringing it back around. We know. We know. He's very nice. We know we're dealing with. 
<laughs> so no, I just love seeing them involved and in getting caned by Izzy, which I told his mother when she visited, which I apparently shouldn't have. I was like, he's been doing great in wrestling. And she's like, we don't talk to mom about wrestling. <laughs> she doesn't need to know that I'm in, da- I'm in any uh, 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 simulated danger of any sort. <laughs> so. But yeah, uh, VCW is one of the shows I'm having the absolute most fun. It is fun. It is fun. I love the backstage. And I'm having good matches there too. I just It's just been a blast. It's been a blast. And I get to work people that I hadn't had a chance to work in like and and i i've seen them on the come up Mm -hmm. and i'm like oh good this is a place it's a different mix Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's why i love going places like that going to revenge because it is a mix of like i feel like when we do all these pittsburgh area shows it is roughly the same people you know but it's good to go to like a revenge and see like okay here's the cleveland people here's the buffalo people mixing it up here's the pittsburgh people i don't get to see uh, too often anymore for one reason or another you go to vcw it's like okay here's some west virginia ohio people mixing up with the people we know from here you know like i love these melting pots that seem to happen at these spaces right there's like there's just a, a like when, whenever I go to a place and I see that there's a vision for something mm-hmm. and there's a direction and it feels like we're doing something, that's when I get the most excited. Absolutely. So speaking of which, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, I, I've been kind of introduced, reintroduced to you here over the last yeah. couple of months. And, and I had a, you, you, you kind of you kind of you kind of spoiled me on this before. But I had a question for you for this, Shoot. And which was. How many Ribera steak jackets, steak, steakhouse jackets <laughs> from Japan do you actually own? Because it appeared that you own several because I kept seeing it come out with different colored right. jackets. But right. apparently I've been duped. So <laughs> I've the, been kayfabed the on jackets this. for our tag team gimmick. Mm are not Ribera State Jackets. Okay. So, so Ribera... Because I, like, I was like, how did you get one for him? There's no so way you, he went to Japan. Yeah, so you can't... Yeah, he's too young. He, I, I mean, he would do great there. He would do amazing there. Um, the... Okay, so real quick for those in the watching that aren't... that don't understand what the Ribera State Jacket is, Ribera Steakhouse is a famous Japanese steakhouse that is wrestler-associated in a, in a deep and profound kind of way. And so... If you are a wrestler, and now and you, and it's not just being a wrestler. Like honestly, you kind of have to be on like a on like a on like a decent level show. Mm-hmm. So if you go over there and just like work work a Japanese indie, they won't necessarily know what's going on. But if you're on a if you're on a, a high if you're on a high enough level there, uh, if you luck out and get on like I did, and get on to like a, a pretty good show, um, and they they kind of get that, like you'll get you know you'll get a jacket, uh, and and so like the reverse. You, you can't just go buy a jacket. To my knowledge, you cannot buy these. Mm-hmm. They don't sell them. Now, I'm sure somebody might hawk theirs on eBay, which I think is a terrible tragedy. It, it's literally my most treasured item from wrestling. And I'm still a mark enough for myself that I, like, I think it's become kind of go... Sorry, go I think it's probably become pretty gauche to wear your Ribera jacket out to the ring. They, I, I know a lot of wrestlers used to do it when they get them. I still do, okay? Because, look, man, I'm 45. I don't care who knows. Uh, the fact that I can go as hard as I go, and I go as hard as any of those. There we go, baby. The fact that I can go as hard as I go at my age, uh, it, you know, I like, I wrestle guys literally that could be my children. Um, and... Uh, and some of them with the cowboy the hat with yeah. the cowboy hat. Oh yeah. That was inspired by two people. Uh, AJ Kazana, uh, who I wrestled and, uh, I, I just f- totally fell in love with the country gentlemen. Uh, just great guys. And then, uh, um, I, I was, I wrestled, I was going to wrestle cowpoke Paul. And I remembered I had this really sweet Stetson. And then I looked at the pictures and I was like, this is kind of a good look. I, like, did you wear your? I, I think there's at least a picture. I can't remember if you wore it to the ring, but you're wearing the cowboy hat with the toga from the Toga Battle Royal. Yes, for this NWA. I was like, because I wanted once again, I want, I, I needed to give them something to remember me by because that's another place that I'm hoping will open some doors for me. Because, like I said, this is uh, you know we talked previously, and I said like I, I know I'm an old man, but I'm in this to win this baby. I'm I, I want that one more good payday. I want to, you know, as ludicrous as it sounds, man, I still want to get. Get a contract somewhere, whatever it takes. Um, but anyway, uh, so the Ribera jackets, like um, I did a lot of work for DDT. Uh, I went to Ribera Steakhouse. Uh, I went with Shirley Doe. Uh, Shirley Doe and I got to eat dinner across at the table right across from us. You know, it was at that table. We had, and here's the thing: it was back in the day when you didn't mark out when there were, you know, because <laughs> we're all professionals. Oh, we're all mm-hmm, in the same game. Mm-hmm. I literally across the, uh, on the on the table across from us. Ted DiBiase and Road Warrior Animal. Oh my God! Right, right, and 
it, it was just, I literally like walked up and I was just like, Mr. DiBiase, it's really good to meet you. You know, and I couldn't sit there and be like, oh my God, like, I love you so much. I love your work. Uh, Money Incorporated is one of my Do favorite, you know, I Do love the laugh. Like, like <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Um, I stole his laugh. Like, <laughs> yeah. I know that's part of my like my, my, when I my first favorite thing from my early videography was him because they did a, a legend show and him <clears> laughing into my camera was like I am fucking okay <laughs> I'm started, done I'm done <laughs> when I started doing the laugh at the end of promos uh, it was literally like a mix of I tried to mix Ted DiBiase and uh, Neidhart because those mm -hmm. are my two favorite laughs in wrestling. Mm -hmm. Um. There's the Toga Battle Royal uh, shot, if you guys want to look right in the middle. Dude, that was super calculated, too, because literally I was like, I was like, Kanan, we're going to get right in the middle of this shot. Because mm -hmm. I, I wanted, like I said, I, 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 I pushed my way to the middle. I'm like, we're going to get right, you know, once again, because what you want to present as much as you, look, being in a Battle Royal, it's hard to get a look. Yeah, so, yeah. like, we wanted to present ourselves as much as we could. Uh, Kanan's phenomenal. I love our tag team. Like, I, I think we yeah. have a I think we have a big chance to do something good. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, we have seen uh, early stuff with uh, Kanan. Uh, 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 I think on our Thursday shows or something too, and I've been really impressed with them too. Yeah. yeah. So the, um, uh, but yeah, so so I I got to do a lot of stuff with DDT. Uh, if I can toot my own horn, for those mm -hmm. of you who don't know, uh, you can look me up. I'm the first foreign wrestler to hold a title at DDT Pro. Uh, it's on their Wikipedia. They can never take that away from me, no matter what happens. <laughs> so there we go. Um, uh, right. Nobody, no, the, no, nobody can take championship listings away from you. Right. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, why are we laughing? I don't know. I don't know what we're laughing. No, about right we're now. just gonna let that go. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was the first to do that. Uh, I main evented Cork and Hall uh, for a for like a pay per view event twice. Um, so I, I've I, I've had a chance to be in the big dance a couple times. What I would consider the big dance anyway. Um, you know. And I'm, I was very lucky to do so, but I feel like my jacket was well earned. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, and that first tour was that, uh, each one of those tours is memorable for different reasons. But uh, like being there with other Americans was so great because all the stuff that that was like new to us, we got to experience together. My other tours, I was by myself. It was so there wasn't like every time there was something crazy, like not crazy for them, but culturally different for me. Um, when I was by myself, I was just like. You know, it's like when you're with somebody, you can be like, whoa, that was so crazy, wasn't it? And when you're by yourself, you're just like, ah, okay. Like, <laughs> you know, like there's nobody to. I'm very, yeah, yeah. That's why I love having travel partners. That's why, that's why Katie mm -hmm. goes with me or Missy goes with me on every trip. I can, I'm like, can I, can I hire them to, can we have budget? Okay. You're coming with me. Yeah. 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 But though, like, like that, I, I was very happy to do it and uh, it served me really well. It taught me a lot. Um, I got a question though because I did just look up the Wikipedia page. Okay, here we go. You were, the, you were Is then the tag known, team name. No, no, no. Well, you were then known according to this as Glenn Q. Specter. Yes. What is the Q? You I are don't gonna know love about this, this story. All right. So as you know, I did a. Uh, the character I played was let's call it very. Um, uh, uh, adorable Adrian Adonis. You, was, you were the Wonder Man, Glenn Spector, yeah, it was a, and you had a feud with. Uh, 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 I, I knew you from from videos I saw of uh, feud with, feuding with Chris Hero very yeah. often. Mm -hmm. So it, who wore a Superman shirt at the time? That so. was my. So that that was me taking it in a direction that I wanted to take it in because I I had to find a way to make the gimmick mine, but that wasn't the original conception of the gimmick. So. Um, the gimmick came about in the funniest way. So do you remember AOL Instant Messenger? Mm -hmm. That was our chat room when we started this show. All right. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with my contact over in Japan, a guy named Mackie who is amazing. His name's Mackie Okodama. Um, he was introduced to me by uh, Shirley Doe. And so they had seen, a promoter over there had seen me at a Johnstown War Memorial show that was like, uh, and he liked my look. And he thought I would be a good fit to play this honestly. Like, let's, you know, let's, be, this was the early 2000s. I don't cancel. Actually, you can't cancel me. I'm 45 damn years old. <laughs> good luck. Good luck. I'm 45 years old and I, I can delete my Twitter account at any time because I f don't like it anyway. I mm. fucking hate it. So go ahead. But I played a gay character. Yeah. Um, very similar to like a, 
I mean, I don't know. I, gold dust, like, is it supposed to be gay? I don't know. But that kind of character, like, where it was uh, if, uh, sexually ambiguous. Sexually, if you will. I, yeah. it was sexually ambiguous, and it was, uh, mm -hmm. it was meant to inspire gay panic. If okay. you remember, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the con gay panic and gay comedy. Also, our first uh, interview here was with sexual harassment, so we get it. Right. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, there, that actually, like, I'm, I'm really, uh, Eric and I are, 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 mm -hmm. are on really good terms now. But yes. I think there was some conflict there, and I really, I think they. Th thought that I tried to steal their gimmick. I didn't want to do this. Mm -hmm. This was literally like, it was like being in WWE. I was repackaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, they, uh, they, that was a scratch too, not a pick. But the, um, the, uh, <laughs> the. It's okay. Most people are on audio. So they, um, so they, so I'm on in AOL Instant Messenger talking with Mackie. And this is just such a funny conversation. Uh, he goes, um, we, uh, D, you know, like they, DDT, uh, wants you to be like, and he put Freddie Macury. And I go, who the oh fuck is my. Freddie Macury? And he's like, Queen. And I go, Freddie Mercury? I, I was like, okay. Now, here's the funny part because I love music. I was like, I never, I didn't, my initial association wasn't like, oh, Freddie Mercury's gay. I was like, okay, but I can't sing. You're going to have to dub oh my God. <laughs> all the stuff. Like, I can pretend to sing, but I'm not like a great singer or anything like that. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, okay. All right. So where are we going with this? And so he, then he says, he drops this reference and I would be surprised. I, I don't know if many people are going to get this reference. You would have to be a child of my age and, and watch like, uh, old, like, like, like you'd have to be from a certain movie era, mm -hmm. but he goes, um, I believe it was called the blue oyster, the blue, what is it? Blue, the blue something club. It's the gay club in police Academy. Oh, okay. okay? okay. Um, I don't remember. It's been decades. I since think it was I called police the blue Academy. oyster or something like that. And I was like, and for some reason, that connection between a Japanese guy and an American guy, <laughs> I was like, police academy. I was like, oh, you guys want me to be gay? And he, they were, and he was like, and he was like, yeah. And I'm like, why didn't you just lead with that? <laughs> like, you know, like I think he was trying to softball it to me in case yeah, I would, yeah. in case I'd balk. But he had no idea how much I wanted a contract. I was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I was like, I'll play whatever character you want me to play. I'd be like, I've seen Goldust. I like Goldust. This isn't a problem. There's some face smack emojis happening in the chat room right now. <laughs> what, what? I mean, I, what, what, you know, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's worse. It's it's fine. It's fine. oh, I don't care. I just, I just like love, I said, I'm just loving the reactions right now. Yeah, well, that's that's just how it happened. Um, because like, because people have to understand, like, when you have a vision for what you want in life, mm. like, you'll steamroll and and fight for that. And like yeah, yeah, at yeah. the time, at the time, like, I didn't want anything other than to be a pro wrestler. Yeah. And so it wasn't. Believe me, I always envisioned myself as like Stan Hansen. Um, somebody said something funny. Uh, I think she corrected us. Blue oyster salad bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is, is what it was called apparently. <laughs> Um, we got a police academy aficionado in the chat room. Nice. Apparently. So um, Tina from Seattle is our is our fact checker. But uh, but but um, I you know like I I always envisioned myself as like a Stan Hansen or or all the guys I looked up to. You know what I mean? I, Jake Roberts. Like, sure. but it, but it, it just that. But life didn't play like like life deals you the hands you dealt. And if I hadn't done what they had asked me to do, I wouldn't have got what I what I got. You wouldn't have got the jacket. You know? Yes. <laughs> Uh, you know, and it's tough because I will say like, you know, I was talking to Tommy Dreamer at one point, um, and I'd gone and done some dark work for, uh, WWE and stuff like that. And he was like, dude, you gotta, it's time to leave the gimmick behind because mm -hmm. this is now holding you back. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was probably right. Mm -hmm. I probably played it too long. Uh, but it was like an easy crowd reaction. Yeah. Uh, I did it. I, I was able to, when I turned it into something I liked, when I, when I turned it from, so it started out as it was uh, the Q stood for Queen mm -hmm. because somehow that was the connection with the Japanese populace that was like mm -hmm. that that makes it gay, okay. right? And so I partnered with Dan Shukudino. We had a great we had a great tag team. Literally, wait 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 wait. Is this was this the one that came to IWC and had the match with sexual harassment and, and Jason Gorey and no. everything in it? No, no, no. Okay. that was uh, like I I had been injured by then. 
Okay. okay. Um, but no, no, no. But, but isn't that the same person that came over here? I'm wondering. You wouldn't have been around by then, but, but maybe you don't know. Um, but but uh, Dan Chukandino and I were in a tag team that was literally, this is so funny because there's so many references. So right at that moment, the Motor City Machine Guns got hot. And so they literally called us the Gay Machine Guns. <laughs> that was our tag team. Okay, name. okay. Go look it up on Wikipedia. They get very literal over there. <laughs> yes. So we were the Gay Machine Guns. Uh, we beat. Um, oh my God, the guys that we they put us over for the tag titles. It's incredible. Uh, Shinsuke Takagi was the owner of the company at the time. I think he still is. Um, uh, Ryoji Ito, who's a Deathmatch King guy from Big Japan. Um, uh, oh gosh. Um, who were the two other guys? The two other guys are amazing too. Um, I, I'm gonna mess their names up, so I'm gonna Tagashi Sasaki, I think, and then um, oh Gentaro. Is it? Uh, excuse me a second. Is this you? Yes. <laughs> That's me. Look at my abs. Shit. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's the guy that came over and had a match here. Yeah, Dan Shukadino. Yep. He's amazing. Yep. Um, so I didn't know this at the time. He had kayfabed it with me, but he actually is gay. Mm-hmm. He's out now. Mm-hmm. Like, fully out. Like, he was out then, but I mean, like, he's out. It was a weird time because you could do the character, but couldn't, like, it was tough to be out at the time, right? I so, think it was. Yeah. Or he just didn't want to make me uncomfortable, which I, I have no idea because he didn't speak very much English. <laughs> So he might have been telling me he was gay the whole time. I should correct myself. I have no idea. But he was like, he was really cool to hang out with. He took me to um, E3 my, uh, in Japan, which is amazing to, if you're like video games. Okay. Like uh, they, have, they have an E3 thing in Japan back then. And like, oh my God, dude, I've never seen so much like crazy stuff. He was just there. Um, but but uh, that opened a lot of, like I said, it opened a lot of doors for me. It was weird though. Like, it, like I said, it was never the way I visioned myself as a wrestler. Um, but it taught me a lot about character work and stuff like that. And then, so I had to find a way to make it my own because I realized in the States, I wasn't really enjoying it. Like, and I, and I needed to find a way to make it like fit. So I said, so I was like, I I shouldn't say I was Noah Panico, Shirley Doe's brother. We were at a, we were, I, I had him over my house. I had a little like house party. He was over there and I used to wear these fuzzy wristbands, workout bands, Mm -hmm. like, before John Cena made it popular. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, I was sitting there and like, I was bull, I was just BSing. My wife's there. She was always my wife at the time. She was my girlfriend at the time. And um, we were just talking and I had, I had come off that first tour and the character was super hot and promoters were asking me to do it over there. And I was like, Jesus, how do I make this like my own, you know? And he's looking at the cuffs and he's like, those remind me of wonder woman bracelets. He's like, you should, he's like, you should dress up like Wonder Woman. It was literally his idea. Like, and and it and I was like, and I was like, I love Wonder Woman. I have a subscription to Wonder Woman as a comic book. I was like, this is a good idea because now I can do like superhero stuff. So it's not mm-hmm. just like the gimmick has layers. It's not just a gold dust style effeminate gimmick. It's also like I'm a superhero gimmick. Uh, and it it really worked for a while. This is really interesting because we were talking about your, how your name came about because I kind of came on a, you know, I, I kind of like made a connection. So your your path here is involving like, like you know, Wonder Woman and Queen, like band and comic book. Tell the people your the origin of Glenn Spector as a I name. I was sitting with Jimmy, Double Budokan, we were sitting together at his house and he trained me um, and, and, had, and had fixed the situation that I was in and, and, and got me my first opportunities. And we talked before about how great a guy he was. And he was like, you know, we should take this on the road. We could do tag team stuff. We were like, um, and I'm like looking at his devil thing. And I was like, and it's very Lucha Libre inspired and all that stuff. And I was like, and, and there was one Lucha Li- Luchador that I just love. Uh, and I still love to this day, L.A. Park. Uh, back then, I knew him as La Park, obviously. Oh, there's sure. like four of them in MLW now. Right, yeah. So you have your, your pick of the La Parka litter. Um, but, uh, Go ahead. The La Litter. I was, I was trying, yeah, I was trying to connect something there, but it didn't work. Go ahead. Uh, but, um, but yeah, but L.A. Park is amazing. And, um, and so I was like, I was like, well, I can't do a skeleton because L, like L.A. Park, or like I thought La Parka at the time, um, he's already doing that. So I was like, what if I did a ghost? And he was like, that could be cool. Ghost of the Devil, it, it kind of works. And so I was like, uh, names. And I was like, and I was like, and, and I was like, oh, the Spectre from like DC Comics. And so with that spelling, and so I, I, I was like, that's what we'll do. So I was like, Spectre. And then I was like, I don't want to have just one name. 
And so I wanted a first name. And my first name, Glenn, is because I'm a huge Misfits fan, uh, Glenn Danzig. And, I, and that's how it came together. And we were sitting there and that we workshopped. And I said, I said, uh, I, you know, I was like I said, I want to be a Glenn because I like Danzig and the ghost thing. What's, a, what's another word for ghost? Oh, the comic book, the specter. Okay, that works. And then we just stuck it together and that was how I came up. Yeah. So I love that. It's like your name was Banned Comic Books and your path for your characters have been Banned Comic Books. Yes. That's like, I love that symmetry that happens there. I, well, I love. Like it seems to be natural. I, I really love entertainment. Uh, I realize that literally we're the most useless form of anything. Like when, yeah. if there's a giant apocalypse, we're like, all, we're the first ones off the ice yeah, flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but I really, I, I, I think I, I just love, I love being in entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, even my day job is, is in some ways entertaining people. So uh, that's right. You're, you're no stranger to the network here because uh, you, you're, you're the sponsor <laughs> of our friends, top right tabletop, Hell the D and D yeah. show, Hell yeah. uh, uh, drawbridge games over yep. the uh, uh, castle Shannon, not too far from here. So that, that, that's really, cool that like, my, you've, my, been, you've actually kind of been a part of this for a while <laughs> my, my own little creation that that in many ways saved my life and uh, uh now feeds my family so like uh we've been going pretty long here but i, I do want to touch on you took you took some time off we, we again we talked a lot about this yeah. off air but I, I definitely want to present this for the audience too uh you spent obviously some time off you had a bit of an injury you you, you kind of just uh, uh it seems like you just kind of took time for your life for a bit to kind of get things right you know? I, my head wasn't on straight for wrestling there was just a lot of things that went bad at once the problem with wrestling that i think that I, and like uh the, the advice i always give so I, like I'll, I'll throw this out there uh, free advice freely given right but I, I, I tell it to my trainees now all the time. I was like, uh, and I'm a victim of my own self-doubt. Like, I really look back on those last couple of matches I had before I took a long vacation. And I, I look at them now and I'm like, Jesus, man, you still had it. You, mm -hmm. just, you know, uh, they're, they're not, they're, they're good matches and everything's there. All the pieces are there. But my head wasn't right. Um, and... Uh, I want to squash. Can I squash those rumors like we were talking about before? I want to squash yeah, those yeah, rumors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say there's a lot of there rumors were, about there why were, you There left. were a couple. When I say a lot of rumors, it's not like anybody past Pittsburgh gives a shit. But, but, like, but over on the indie, indie wrestling board. On the indie message board. <laughs> oh, um, God. So, like... <laughs> So there's a there's a couple popular like like theories I think about why I disappeared. And one of them was I got injured, which definitely sucked. It slowed my momentum down completely. Lost a shit ton of bookings. Uh, it was very damaging to my career. Yeah. But it isn't it it like it isn't why I why I left. Uh, I left because my head wasn't right. Yeah. A lot of people think my wife forced me to leave wrestling, which is hilarious. She's my biggest supporter. Who is listening right now yeah. and correcting you yeah, live and, on the phone. Right, <laughs> yeah, who, who literally keeps my whole schedule, watches my store sometimes when I'm wrestling. Like, it, it's the exact opposite is the actual case. And then lastly, I, I think some people think, because it was one of the last shows I did before I took time off, was my, my friend, my, my close friend in wrestling and, and trainer, Devil Budokan, dying, which also, it did not help... Mm -hmm. um, but it was it was me. It was me. It was it was me losing faith in me. And so what I tell my students now and what I tell young wrestlers who ask me is like and even guys who have been in the business for a long time who are still struggling to make it and, and like just they have it, but they just haven't been seen. The problem with wrestling is like it's this weird combination of like you can be the best and and and, and a ship can pass in the night and, and you can get missed. You have to just persevere and. It, it is so hard because um, it's one of those things. Sometimes lightning strikes in a bottle and like you've been in it for three years, but Fed loves you and boom, you're, you're just there. Like, or you get hired straight out of training. Yeah. Like, but, but a lot of times that's not how it works. And, and the way, so what I like to say to the kids is I, I say, you know, because this was my experience and this is where I screwed up. It wasn't anything outside. It was internal. Mm -hmm. And there will come a point in wrestling and this will happen to everyone. And, and now that I want it again so badly, I'm sure it'll happen to me again, but I'm more prepared for it this time. Uh, there will come a point in your wrestling life where you are going to want to quit and everything is going to seem just completely stacked against you. And I swear, to me at least it seems, that is when you have to push the hardest because there's about to be some kind of breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And if you let it break you, it will. And unfortunately, and I don't mind admitting this on a public podcast because I'm stronger for it now. And I have a great life. I have, I have the most wonderful son. I have the most wonderful wife. I've been married for 20 years. 
Like, I'm a very lucky man. I have my own boss. Mm -hmm. I have a great life. So like, I like if nothing ever happens for me past this, it like, you know, that's fine too. I'm still going to fight like hell to make sure it does. But if, if this is as high as it ever goes, that's fine. I can live with it. Um, but all that being said, don't quit. Like that's when you got to push. There's going to be a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Something's going to come. Like you have to keep moving like that. Like, like, because otherwise this business will eat you alive and it wants to the wrestling business sucks, man. Like it is, it is, it is designed to chew you the fuck up like yeah. by yeah. its very nature. Mm -hmm. Okay. It hurts you physically. It hurts you mentally. Like that's what it does. Hell, it can hurt you spiritually. Like, mm -hmm. like, you know, if, and, and, and that, the thing is this, this business is hard and it's full of hard people for a reason. That's, but that's what I love about it because I feel like every day that I spend back in it is, is a, is a chance for me to prove myself. That's amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing story. Glad to see you back again. Uh, there's a lot of samples of you online. I think some free matches uh, uh, we have out there, clips, things like that. Uh, of course, Pit Fight, as we mentioned. That, that was is, so fun. That, 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 that's a fun show. I'm so mm -hmm. glad to be uh, – I haven't been there in person for several years. It was so cool to be there and do it live for the first time uh, 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 the, uh, online. The thing that meant the most to me about that particular match is like – there is a guy involved in that match, QB Blitz, who is in a fight that none of us can understand that is so much bigger than wrestling. And the fact that he is in that ring, he dropped 91 pounds to be there, nice. and wrestled that match mm -hmm. after not being in the ring for God knows how long. Like, that is, that's like, I was there, Troy was there, uh, oh, sorry, you know, Troy was there, Hentai was there, yeah. uh, Bobby was there. But there was a guy in that ring that's fighting a fight, like, you know, that's Blitz, awesome. is, Blitz is the man. He's, awesome. He should be an inspiration for everybody. That's great. Yeah. I get him back. I think we've had him on before, but I don't think we talked about that story. Mm -hmm. So, um, strange. You know how I first met QB Blitz? He was in a podcast session I was conducting. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All things. That's how I got connected. But, uh, no, really great stuff. Really fun show. And, again, fun show. And there's a lot. Listen, it's big. It's, it's, it's put on by the students. There's a lot going on. But it's just a fun show, yeah. right? It's too much. It's too much show. Of course. But any of these charity oh, shows are. Literally over. any indie show ever. <laughs> Every show is over. Well, you know how these charity shows go. They just like, you know. Doesn't start on time. Uh, so, how, we, like, how many multi-man matches are we having and everything like that. But, but again, th th those kids do a great job up there at, at, at uh, University of Pittsburgh Greensburg. And, and it's a fun show. And, and, and again, it's a nice kind of spectrum of wrestling in the area, mm -hmm. too. It's like basically almost everybody important that's not already booked that night uh, <laughs> that is in, in town, right? It, it also is a chance for like, uh, you know, uh, I'm not speaking out of turn. I think when I say that Pittsburgh wrestling can get weirdly territorial. Oh, yeah. Like, well, I remember mm -hmm. a couple years ago. Uh, I, by the way, I'm not involved in that. I'm a, <laughs> I, no, I'm dead serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a mercenary. Yes. Like, so anybody listening to this, if you want to book me and the price is right, we're gold, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there you, I, go. you know, give me a call. Like, well, even, message me. Get, send me a private message. I will make your show better. There was a there was a there was a tag match a couple years ago, and I looked at it, and I'm just like, you're teaming with the other promoter in the area. You realize, <laughs> you know, I talked to somebody. I was like, you know, did you guys like have a conversation and yeah. maybe have a good uh, 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 working relationship I, now I, or and stuff like that? I mean like this that? with I mean this with all the arrogance that it comes that that it sounds like. I'm above that shit. Yeah. So like, if you want to book me, book me. Yeah, that's kind of. <laughs> yes, I'm in very much in that thing, and when. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, wrestling's wrestling's open, and there's 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 allowed to be more than one in the area. And if you think you need to be the only one, then you know that's an interesting take. You're uh, not you're, you're not WWE. You're you're not fucking that is WWE. the thing. That, if yeah. I was working for WWE and they said yeah. don't work the indies, I'd and, be like, okay. okay. There are two things. <laughs> like, okay, all right. Fuck it. Uh, I want to say two things that piss me off the most. The people that act like they think they're fucking Vince McMahon. Sure. And the people say, I'm not doing that because I'm not Vince McMahon. Yes. Because they mm -hmm. won't continue their thing. For it. Those are the two things that have pissed me off. And only one of those was a direct quote. Uh, so just that that's I'm putting that out there. Um, anyways, Glenn, it has been tremendous to have you on the show. Uh, I'm glad we had you on. So we are not done. We have to go over the finals of Mayhem Mania. 
Oh, yeah, I want to hear this. You would, and I want your opinion on this. Absolutely. This is what the people have booked. <laughs> the people, the people of Mayhem Show have booked over the last six or seven weeks, eight weeks, I think it's been. Uh, and, and we'll it's be going over that. It's been 84 years. It's been 84 years. I need to have more accent to be more, uh, uh, what's his face? Anyways, no, no. <laughs> Guys, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to take a quick breather, maybe grab another beer. I don't know. And uh, we'll be right back for the finals of Mayhem Mania. We'll be back after this. And I'll hit the right button. Polly Kilpus will have to remove three dresses, whereas the crew of blood only have to remove one. And I want to know, how do they rate on a fashion perspective? Captain Decapitate, how are you rating this ensemble? I know he can be proud. Look at that! He hugs with sincerity. He took him into his home, trained him. Kilpus just removed a hot dog oh. from his undergarments. And I know betrayed Polly Kilpis to join the crew of blood. Decapitate, don't call him Captain Crunch in green. And he was willing to do it because. Really proving to be a major factor here. What a mind. Open clothesline. Get anything else in this match show. He can hug with a uh, with, with, with shooter Gan in green. The corseting un unwound by John Paul. Was on the side of the crew of blood. Oh. Now a meeting of the mind. Close to bear! Big ol' hug for Cap'n Crunch himself. A moral victory for Pauly Kilpis. One monster, some of the biggest and the baddest. We've suffered dynamic to this monster's ball match. The velvet voice of Marcus Scott. Scott, all six foot nine, just got a swing and a miss. Oh, oh, oh. We're in the midst of the fans. Oh, oh, oh. Look out, look out! Oh no, oh, we're coming, we're over, coming, charging! Oh. That's oh. clear, in death drop. What the hell? Hey, He's gonna fly! He's electric! Boogie, woogie, woogie! No CFR, look, get out, Biggins! Defense leaving his opponent, Cataton. Uh, Lowrider could be the final oh. girl. Competitors taking it in this way. Comes Oprah, indeed. Oh, big. No way, no way! A victim. Big spear to Jimmy Shane! For the second time, flying hot. Thunderbird shook the heavens today. On a very fair and even damage and destruction. Biggest reputation. Age Look dangerous out. territory. Oh, big clothesline. Michael and Rico and Amanda. We really can make a huge. How do you get things back on track even with. Myers out in that moment. Black. You know, his claws and oh. now fighting. It's bode well for them. Two on one. I want to see the pride of West Virginia. Really have a bone to pick with tears. Maybe on the line is. One of the mind eraser, the first. Way we go, the lassoer of Lee. Look out. No. Oh, man. Only for just a moment. Oh, my lord. Stutter. 
right, and he is. What did he slip there? Wait a second. There. You're trying to get a word. This is all happening in front of Nicholas's sub. Now, Cannonball by. They're gonna. Good oh, work. Remy. 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 Remy just found Malachi. Lose the match in order to save the life of Malachi. Gage. Polly Kilpis will have to remove three dresses, whereas the crew of blood only have to remove one. And I want to know, how do they rate on a fashion perspective? Captain Decapitate, how are you rating this ensemble? I, I know he would be proud. Look at that! He hugs with sincerity. He took him into his home, trained him. Kilpis just removed a hot dog oh. from his undergarments. And I know betrayed Polly Kilpis to join the crew of blood. That decapitate, don't call him Captain Crunch in green. He was willing to do it because really proving to be a major factor here. What a mind. Oh, big clothesline. Can anything else in this match? He can hug with a with with, with shooter Gan in green. Showing. The corseting un unwound by John Paul. Was on the side of the crew of blood. Oh. Now a meeting of the minds. Close to bear! Big ol' hug for Cap'n Crunch himself. A moral victory for Pauly Kilpis. Just one monster. Some of the biggest and the baddest. We've suffered dynamic to this monster's ball match. The velvet voice of Marcus Scott. Scott, all six foot nine, just got swing and a miss. Oh, oh, oh. We're in the midst of the fans. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, look out, look out! Oh no. Oh, we're coming, we're coming, charging. Oh. That's oh. clear in death drop. What the hell? He's gonna fly! He's electric! Woogie, woogie, woogie! No, CFR, look, get out, Biggins! Defense leaving his opponent, Tatatan. Uh, Lowrider could be the final oh, girl. Oh, Predators taking it in this way. Comes over indeed. Oh, big. No way, no way! He's a victim. Big spin! To Jimmy Shane! For the second time, flying hot. Thunderbird shook the heavens today! Wrestling Mayhem Show. Sorgatron here in the studio. Riz is out there. I know what I know what type of zoom you did or what type of uh, transition you did there, Sorg. <laughs> I guess somebody's been cube, doing graphics. Yeah. That was way, a cube I don't know if you saw in the background. Uh, Dutters gave me a present earlier for my birthday, belated, but uh, oh. it's a sweet Ninja Turtle. So I love this. It's the mutant mayhem style, but I, I definitely had astronaut Raph uh, and stuff. But also, that is definitely a Spock Donatello. So. Isn't that, that amazing? Is yeah. that Rap is, is my favorite turtle, but also least likely turtle to actually be an astronaut. Let's be honest. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, yo, okay. So, are you a fan of General Raph or like '80s cartoon Raph? Because that's two of, different Raph. I am. I'm a fan of 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the live action movie. Raph. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and who is depicted kind of like he is in the comic. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and, and, and that's carried through. In the original comic. that's carried through through the rest of the cartoons. Yeah. I love that Donatello, Donatello in the 2012 series, which I'm watching through right now, mm -hmm. is the same voice as the Raphael, <laughs> the original. I, so, did, is, does anybody debate whether isn't that movie almost perfect? Honestly, the original, yeah, almost, like, almost, yeah. Like it is weirdly for a film that is probably geared primarily towards like 
young kids. It was, but it wasn't. It is weirdly perfect. It, but it was like, but it wasn't, right? Yeah. Like it was, but they just went in a different, different direction. And like, and then the next one was more kids in Vanilla Ice and everything. Uh, uh, nothing and after the first, like once again, there are no Ninja Turtles past the first one. Like I'm good until we get the three. Uh, but <laughs> I, hey, listen, I got my VHS copy of Secret of the Use signed by Vanilla Ice. So, oh and, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be weird. But then there's Did he people. You also signed your copy of Cool as Ice. I didn't, I didn't have a copy of Cool as Ice. <laughs> uh, but 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 also like I'm like I'm weird. I'm like this guy with his Ninja Turtles tape. He's gonna like hate this. And I'm like, there's people with like blankets and belt buckles of turtles, and it's like they just like sign this turtle thing I happen to have yeah, that yeah. I found in my drawer. You know, and it was it was at the gathering of the Juggalos of all places. Uh, <laughs> I was actually watching. Turtles I want to work a Juggalo show. Juggalos, if you're watching. <laughs> Apparently, really, apparently, get yourself over with Violent J is this is the secret. That's uh, what I'm told. So, I, uh, dude, I'm there. Bring back I'm, the I'm, wonder. I'm, bring back the Wonder Man, and I think we I'm, get booked. All right, what <laughs> out, dude? I'll do it for the Juggalos. I will do it yeah, for the Juggalos. Listen, Cole Cabana goes, and he's a, a, a officer. He's Cole officer Cabana, Cole Cabana. Yeah. and he is some of the I, greatest I would, heat I've seen. I would point show. out, uh, you can see it on IndieWrestling.us. Uh, Cole Cabana and Glenn Specter is a great mm-hmm. Wonder Man. Glenn Specter is a great little match. Do I do we have that on there? I believe you do. Okay. Thank thank you. Thank you, uh uh gentleman that gave me the back catalog. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I believe you do. I believe I've I've watched it a couple well, times. Listen, there. Stuff from the two thousands is kind live, of kind of license by... ambiguous at this point. Yeah. And we just like, well, let's just put it out. It's let's it should be free. I believe in wrestling history freedom. Uh so <laughs> I'm very. Uh, it's like uh, after 20 years, it should be. Free. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe you should just be able to see all the old CM Punk matches. Uh, you know, I think. But who would want there. to? No. Oh! oh! Hey, Shots oh. fired. Hey, you know what? Eat it, Phil. Let's talk. We're going to clip that one out. Uh, <laughs> listen, let's talk about matches people want to see. Yeah. And it's time for the final. This is the last call. This is the last lineup. And we'll be one decision to make. For Mayhem Mania. Take a look. That's right, Mayhem Mania. Thank you again, Team Hamifist on the Twitter. Jesse down in Florida uh, for the uh, help with graphics and that intro, amazing intro that we have not had a cease and desist yet from WWE on. Uh, anyways. Not- wrestling nerds, WrestlingNerds.us. WrestlingNerds.us? I believe so. I was trying to remember. Sorry, I didn't remember his I want to give him a plug, and I don't I don't think that's the right one. But hey, we'll, we'll, we'll get it- that here. We'll get it. Sorry, it's fine. I, it's, I'm crossing the streams. Anyways, there's a lot to keep track of. Anyways, this is the final lineup. This will be your Mayhem Mania, as decided via a lot of this via Patreon in the bank. One, two, maybe I got three, four, five. Yeah. Hey, the final, this is the eight matches that will uh, be the main card. You're going to love these. And Glenn, I would love your reactions as we go through these. First of all, God, I'm going to start with this. It is uh, Nikki Cross and Thea Hale in a birthday waffle tower eating <laughs> contest. I'm, I'm all. I'm, uh, why is this not the main? <laughs> I didn't. We didn't determine the main event here. Uh, uh, you know. I then let's see what we got. We got three way: AJ Styles, Nakamura, and Finn Balor. I love this match. Yeah, I, like I love this match. I obviously, for, this is the, this is the work rate match. Did I forget to put a stipulation on here? I need to double check this list. Uh, I feel I feel like I've missed something here. Uh, but anyways, I, double check that in the in the, in the Slack for me, Riz. Uh, also, we have of course Rhea Ripley and Chelsea Chelsea Green. I don't do that as good as Matt. Uh, let's see. Uh, one of the other ones that I think this was made at the last minute last week. Uh, Oscar versus Batista. <laughs> You know you want to see it. I don't. You kind of do. I literally but don't. you kind of do. No, it's I'm What good. if he was Drax? Okay, maybe. There you go. I, I, I knew I got your inner nerd with that one. Uh, let's see. This is a big one, of course. This is going to be Pete Dunne, Chad Gable, and Kevin Owens. And we just talked about one, a blindfold match. A three-way blindfold match? Why not? Um, I've never uh, seen it before. Uh, uh, it, it will be a clusterfuck. I'm, there you I'm, go. And I'm in. I'm in. No, and by the way, I didn't state the goal of this is to uh, book a better card than WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Also, remember, we started a decade ago where it was very different WrestleManias. Okay. Um, and, uh, and, and, and we had the absolute power 
uh, 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 as if we were The Rock in charge of WWE right now. Uh, let's see. Next up, we have another three-way. It's Damian Priest versus Gunther versus King Corbin. Uh, yes, King Corbin uh, in a King of the Road match. Okay. I like, so I theoretically like all of that. But why, <laughs> why does he have to be King Corbin? I, well, that was a, that was a, uh, Doc Reveny really loves King, okay. King Corbin. All right. uh, the former, I don't know, I think it was off your time, the former David DeMira okay. that was uh, around. Uh, let's see, Tiffany Stratton versus Lita. Sure. All versus new. I like it. I like it. Uh, here we go. And the last match is AJ Lee versus Roxanne Perez in a fill on a pool match. <laughs> yep. And uh, also the. I mean, I'm, AJ... I'm in it just for the stipulation. <laughs> yeah. Can they just leave him on the pole the whole yeah, time? Yeah, and yeah, not they, yeah. And they just walk away. The yeah, objective <laughs> isn't to just get him down. It's open, just fight, open the show with there. that and make him stand stand up there the whole the entire time. show. <laughs> mm-hmm. Never get it. Um. Yeah, the AJ oh, I and that. I'm Shinsuke sorry. match is, in fact, the famous WLC. I'm sorry. I missed out on that one. We, we I, LC. I swore I made it. So that will be a WLC. Oh, I used their old graphic and didn't use the new one that I made. I'm sorry. All right. Of course, it's not all just matches at, at, at WrestleMania. There's a lot of, lot of stuff around it. First of all, there is, you know, uh, in, in honor of our friends at, at Pit Fight, we do have a Bobcat or no, or a, mountain nope. lo- a Mountain Lion Melee match. Which hold on a second, which which involved animal based uh, participants. Let me get the list here. Uh, okay. I don't know who the fuck these people are. Uh, <laughs> I have I have the list. Oh, yeah, let's see, uh, Riz, who's who is on this graphic? Uh, we have Ralphie the Buffalo. Is that Eddie from, Eagle? Oh, wait, wait, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> we have Veronica and Baby Boo. Okay. Okay. From TikTok, uh, Hobbs. From Calvin and Hobbs, not okay, Powerhouse yes. Hobbs. Swoop. The from. I think yeah, from I think that one's from the Philadelphia Eagles. I think. Oh, oh yes, okay. <laughs> that one's the Philadelphia Eagles. That, there. Way different reference than I thought. Yes, it was. <laughs> Clifford the Big Red Dog. Because mm-hmm. who's going to eliminate Clifford the Big Red Dog? Right. Nobody. Uh, Turtle the puppet. Uh, uh, Bobby F. J. Town's puppet that uh, yes. Chris Jericho kicked in the face, or Chris LaRusso <laughs> kicked Chris in the face. Uh, I couldn't find. Face. Yeah, yeah. Chris LaRusso kicked the puppet in the face. And I think I think Jeff Cobb might have hugged it I, or something. I couldn't find Probably. a picture as of press time. Uh, Taima the Hawk, uh, I believe that's a, the Seahawks real life mascot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, Animal, who's not really an animal, but he's a Muppet. But he is named Animal, so he's I'm named sure. Animal, so mm-hmm. it counts. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know what? Hey, I, by the way, a correction here. Uh, no, I did. I didn't make a graphic on this one for the WLC. They're just tiny uh, tables, ladders, and chairs, so you can't see them. Oh, that's all. Uh, that's all there is there. Okay. That's that's all that's happening there. And then finally, of course, what would be a WrestleMania with a star-studded watch party? You have David Arquette, Poppy, R Truth, Happy Corbin, Matt Camp, uh, Alf, RJ City, and Victor Perry and the Wrestling Club. I mean. I, uh... Does anybody not like RJ City for real? Seriously. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Riz is like his best friend. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, he's amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, or, uh, RJ City is responsible for most of Riz's uh, interviewing skills. I, like, this is I'm, true. I'm there for it. I this feel is te- true. I actually feel terrible because I've talked over Riz this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. Uh, yeah, no, the. the yeah, yeah, there was a the, Riz tried to interview him in Dalton Castle at a show, and it kind of yeah. went. Oh my god, it's direction. like literally that's my who's who of guys I love to watch in AEW though. <laughs> Dalton yeah. Castle's oh, amazing, yeah. fucking great, fucking great. I just uh, I dude, just stood there the love entire it. time. Yeah. Love the gimmick. It I once again when I, when I think about when I'm like oh if I had hung in there a little bit longer like mm-hmm. Dalton Castle, Wonder Man, and the and the boys would have been amazing. Yes find the old interview and send it to you because it's only a couple minutes and you'll find it hilarious uh mm-hmm. so anyways um from there okay so that's the line up there now we do have the matches that were made but did not graduate to the main card okay. i sent you a list Glenn. Oh, uh oh, yeah yeah you, so you, you we're gonna have you uh, it's on your facebook so so i'm gonna read these out because we didn't make graphics for them because they didn't make cut but we do have room for a pre-show for mm. for mayhem mania so what we have here is uh mike tyson versus goldberg <laughs> Carmelo the versus Carmelo versus Carmelo Hayes versus Trick Williams versus Abyss. 
Karrion mm. Cross versus Eddie Thorpe in a KO submission match. Uh, the Rock versus Roman Reigns versus Tyler Bate. Really? We made that? Uh, mm -hmm. Metaphor versus The Core versus Tony D. Stax and Luca Crucifino and Adriana Rizzo in an extremely enforced rules match. What the fuck did we do last week? Um, <laughs> Dragonov versus Drew McIntyre versus Moose. I don't know how he got Moose from Impact, but okay. Um, Ricochet versus Walking Wild. Oh, that one. <laughs> I'm not done here. Logan, yeah, but, but it's got to be that Logan one because Paul, there's a Glenn Spector connection to that one. <laughs> Logan Paul versus Miz in a blue steel cage. Okay, that's... Uh, uh, I mean... The blue, ca the blue cage almost got you, right? It did. It, it would be interesting. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> So, uh, oh, so what, who do I think we actually should book for the pre Yes, who should be so, the So, like, pre -show? selfishly, uh, Jakeem Wild, because I, I love him, and I... I think it's, and, I think it's mm -hmm. walking Wild. And, uh, well, how, I, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> I know. I, well, I so, can't pronounce Shima. I was about to say, so I, I, I am one of his trainers, and I can't pronounce any of his names except DJ Z. So, <laughs> that's what... Hey, shout out, brother. I love you. But, like, but seriously, I can, I've tried to pronounce your new name 500 times, and I... Say it differently every time I say it. I'm never going to get it right. You know, I, I think when he got hired, when he got... I literally almost called him Joaquin Phoenix once. <laughs> I think I've done it a couple of times. When he got his name at WWE, I think I had a road trip with, with Dombrowski. And he's like, for a guy that always complained about his spelling being terrible all these mm -hmm. years for every name he had, and he gets that name. Yeah. <laughs> so. oh my, and, well, that's the other thing is like, you try to look him up because I'm like... Hey, I'm in his Wikipedia. Look it up. Like, but no, you try to look it up. Who do like, you look up? I, I, don't, I have no idea. Probably walking wild now if you can spell it. Oh, that's how you do it. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. I'm saying I like can't spell it. Everything else just goes down from there. Um, uh, slight spoiler, plug your ears for Godzilla. There's a monster in there named Shima, and I popped in the theater. Oh, well, <laughs> so. Um, So, I mean, like, which of these matches besides that one? You can pick that one if you want, but I'm, I'm going to pick that one. Yeah. Okay, okay. Ricochet versus Walking Wild but, is well, on also, the by the way, it's going to be the work rate match of the show. Absolutely, of course, like, absolutely. There you, you know. go. Air horn in the uh, in uh, the chair in the chat room. It'll get the "This is awesome" chant. There you go. We love that. Yeah, especially with how uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, uh, Walking Wild's uh, uh, viral moments in the last uh, month or oh, so. Oh, crazy! The, yeah, like the 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 launch the off of the ropes. launch was so oh, cool. Cheese. Good on him. Good on him for, again, making your moment, you know, uh, 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 getting noticed. You know what we, I mean? We've trained a couple times in the last year. Like, I want to say the last, like, like, like calendar year. Mm -hmm. Not this calendar year, but the, right, like the last calendar year. Yep. And, um, and like, he is, I, I mean, he is so good now. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just crazy. I, it, you get to the performance center, like, you know, you know, you get the people that know what it takes to get there. Yeah. You know, you kind of see like a uh, 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 nutrition, right? Like seeing Elias from what he was here. And he was a good built guy at yeah, Logan yeah. Shulo here in, in, in town. When in Elias was like, mm, somebody got the, the WWE nutritionist on him mm -hmm. and, oh, and sure, weight sure. trainers and, and, and boom, he already had a good frame and just got it. Right. Like, I, I think that's it. You see people kind of hone in, you know, that, that come from that, you know, as long as you're not signed in as like a, you know, how Kevin Owens and, and, and Sami Zayn where it was like, you just be you here, you know, which is, which is also good. But, I, that's but, me all over, man. Yeah. So I don't like, uh, like this, this body works for me. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I, I work out. I literally, I work out every day, mm -hmm. but like, I also, you know, like I also eat ridiculous stuff. But also the difference is, and when, I also can't stop drinking. So well, you like don't have to worry, <laughs> but also like for somebody in that state that like you, you don't have to now worry about all the other things around being a wrestler. My you can just, you, a body character but, 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 but you yeah. go to WWE and you can concentrate on my job now is to be a wrestler. Mm. I can concentrate on the nutrition better and, and the workout. But I, I think will, that's a big, but change. I will say that that to a certain degree, I agree with you 100% in mm -hmm. one way. In another way, it's kind of an excuse. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't want people that are young and up and comers that could have really good bodies, but honestly, I know this is going to sound lame, but I wear I wear almost nothing in the ring. I literally wear old school short trunks. Yeah, I don't give a crap. Um, my body fits my character really well, and I work out like a crazy person. And I will out cardio you. Like I don't gas. Mm -hmm. So I, I I when I say when when I talk shit, I I back it up. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Hey, Rogue, shout out to our friends. I, I forgot that. Hey, we got pizza over there. <laughs> so. I, I, uh, so Tuesday night is pizza night. Tuesday night is pizza night. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. 
Uh, but our friends providing the pizza, feeding our guests here. Oh, yeah. Good, uh, Slice great on Broadway, place. New York City style, Yinzer made, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, North Hills, uh, South Side. Uh, they actually ended up, uh, actually a connection because of these shows. They ended up sponsoring the uh, uh, stand-up get-down show that we did with Aaron Kleiber here uh, a couple week, uh, yeah, a couple weekends ago. Uh, so great partners with us. Uh, really cool. Go check them out. Uh, I need to get in. I got some hoagies from Tim's Market next door that they, they, they own as well here in town, or here in the neighborhood. So uh, if you're around, I know a lot of people, uh, when they get to the neighborhood, they 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 drop in and hit slice, and really appreciate you guys supporting our friends here local in Pittsburgh. Uh, so we're still working on those delivery options for you, Tina. We'll get it out to Seattle sometime. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, somebody needs to book me in Seattle so I can bring it. I, I can stow some in my luggage again. Anyways, uh, it is that time. It is the end of the show because God, we've gone long. Uh, I don't know when I. You know what? You know what always happens when I get one, one of these old school guys. We just talk so much, you know, and we end up with a three hour show. It just it's just what happens. Nobody likes to talk about me more than me. Well, yeah, yeah. That's one thing I've noticed about the veterans too. Uh, so you really know how to talk about yourself. So. What is that time? What did you learn from wrestling this week? Chat room, hit us up. I'm going to check all the chat rooms here real quick. Uh, Riz, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I I learned that uh, even in a documentary, WWE can make me believe that something's not something's going to happen that is emotional. We're talking about the Bray Wyatt documentary. Yes. And at the very at the I very think... end, they hinted at they, they they're they're hinting at a uh something. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna spoil it if anybody saw there it. There might be see. something. I I know it's been around on social media a bit. I but know, yeah. But it, it I feel like that's what the Bray character was. Like I, I don't think it's gonna manifest into something else mm-hmm. because I think that question of whether Bray's come, whether Bray was coming back before, mm-hmm. uh, like the White Rabbit stuff, mm-hmm. like making you believe that something can ha- still happen. Absolutely, with something to, to uh, do I with. Love you, I love your, I love your, I love your, your train not to give it away situation over there. Yes. Uh, no, I watched this last night too. I love that I watched it, hopped on Facebook, and saw Chris Taylor was also just starting to watch it at the same time mm-hmm. I was. So there was like a, I, I felt like like a lot of us were trying to watch it at the same time last night, uh, in lieu of Raw or something like that. But um, no, it has been, it, it was an emotional, a lot of Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. They visit, uh, uh, you know the, and I know, I know friends that that know. Uh, the person that worked on his his stuff, uh, but they interview him a lot. They visited there. Uh, they talk a lot about that connection here in town. Uh, so uh, a local connection, obviously, with this. You know, it's all over this thing. Um, but man, what a story! Uh, you get a little bit. You can you get they they have a lot of tapes that you've never heard from Bray before of mm-hmm. certain time periods and things like that and what was going on. Uh, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, the WWE is one of the best documentary teams and, and man, you know, some of those people in the research department really know what they're doing too. So, Mm -hmm. uh, but no, that was a really good one. Definitely check that out. Um, that was a wink in case anybody didn't see it. It was a wink for your audio. Thank you. Yes. Yes. We call the winks. Uh, and from the chat room real quick, uh, Tina, out in Seattle says, "I'm not so much." Oh, by the way, Tina like apparently uh, recalls you, Wonder Man from the IWC days. Fantastic, you know, was originally I Thank believe. Thank you, Tina. If I, I recall, in the I Cincinnati area, <laughs> uh, so very familiar with this. Uh, anyways, um, I called out one of your matches earlier too. So. Uh, in the chat. Uh, not so much what she learned, but just some friendly reminders from any week. Be safe, stay hydrated, respect boundaries, and wrestling is for everyone. So there you go. Uh, Mad One says, learned that most of my thoughts about Tony Khan were confirmed by CM Punk and by uh, and my thoughts about Kevin Owens were confirmed by Becky in her book. Oh, I gotta get to that. Oh, his love... His, his, this is a side. I don't know if this is going to be what I learned, but it's what I did learn. Uh, Kevin Owens' uh, uh, son is taller than him. <laughs> Oh jeez! <laughs> yes, apparently, uh, is only I think sixteen and is like 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 six seven. He said, "Oh no way!" Yes, That's awesome. and has a passing interest in wrestling. 
So May not getting pressured, but he's also like, I love the comment in there in the interview that I was I was watching was like, uh, yeah, you know, I'd love, I love I was really glad to see Ray and his son Dominic tag team a couple weeks. I'd love if that happened with me and me son my son, but I'm not gonna pressure it. Of course, it turns out you know it, it's sad that it turned out the way it did for Dom. Uh, he turned into a piece of trash and everything like <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, yeah. So you know we love Dirty Dom though. Absolutely. Oh my God, work himself into WrestleMania again. Come on, you know. So anyways. No pressure, Sid. No My pressure. son's watching. No pressure. <laughs> no, no pressure. <laughs> but we're going to tag someday. Um, <laughs> What'd you learn? Uh, so this is where my head is in wrestling. I'm going to throw you guys off so hard. Okay. Uh, everyone's doing test of strength spots for all. <laughs> um, I watched. A nice old school spot, right? So I watched Mass Superstar, one of my absolute favorites mm-hmm. of all time, uh, Demolition Axe. Mm-hmm. If you, if the, he wasn't Demolition Action. He was being Mass okay. Superstar, of course. But like, uh, um, just so in case you don't know who he uh, is. Who Bill, Bill Eady. Bill Eady. Yeah. Uh, one of the best ever. Um, and I was watching him, Mass Superstar wrestle Hulk Hogan. And uh, they do this test of strength spot. And they stay in the kind of the neutral arms outstretched position for like a long time. Mm-hmm. And like, it's just their intensity. Mm-hmm. And I was riveted. Mm-hmm. And so I don't want to say everybody's doing just as wrong because obviously, like, I'm sure people are doing right some places. But, like, uh, when I see test strength spots, a lot of time it goes right to the get the guy on his knees. Mm-hmm. And no. Like, I'll, don't even do it. Get two guys. Like, like it made sense. Mass Superstar's enormous. Hulk Hogan's enormous. They lock up. Totally believed it. And the fight, like, it just takes a long time to get where it is. And I, I know people are going to be like, oh, it's boring. They're just, like, staying there. The intensity so of not it. Not if it's done right. <laughs> no, it was so exciting. And I was watching it and I was like, Jesus. Like these guys, once again, what we were talking about, these guys are doing theoretically nothing. And it is so damn entertaining. Uh, I'm absolutely in love with this match. Um, it's a great match overall. But, um, and it's one of those ones that's just on YouTube. Like I, mm-hmm. I, I subscribe to a lot of channels that just post old wrestling. And um, <laughs> it, uh, like I was like it. I was like I am going to find next time I am in the ring with somebody of comparable size. I am going to do this spot and I'm going to do it right. Mm-hmm. So there you go. I think VCW is the place to do it too because I because I feel like they, like that's a place I'll appreciate that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like like that or an RWA would appreciate that spot. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. Like I feel like I don't know. I you know what I think you could, I think somebody could get it over at something like an 880 enjoy too you know mm-hmm. I think it could be fun I, with I, that. I, once again I, I feel like it's just a spot no but this is the thing too like and this is what's given me such a revival right now and, and why it's going well for me I think is also everything I do that is a throwback mm-hmm. to old wrestling mm-hmm. is fucking new to these people Though we, we mm-hmm. talked about a little, bit. I can't remember if we talked on the show or off about like the the tag match. You had a pit fight. Like uh, yo, I sat back with Jesse and and, and we we're just like, yeah, we've seen this match before, but it's fucking working. Yeah, right. Like like and, and that is a that's students. At like that's a, day, that's a younger a, crowd. At the end of the day, a story well told is a story well told, e- even if it has tropes that you've seen a million times. Yes. Listen, I mean, if somebody goes in there and reacts the main event of WrestleMania three but they got like 200 people screaming like who fucking cares yep right yep. so like that that's great Mad One also learned that Big E hosting a pizza eating contest between Otis and Omos is high quality YouTube. Yes, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It is. Yes, yes. I was actually, I was, I was through that up. Uh, Katie and I were watching that before the awesome cast here today. Every like, wrestling <laughs> show should include some kind of eating contest. Absolutely. Especially, especially a birthday waffle tower eating contest <laughs> between Nikki Cross and Thea Hale. Let's do it, guys. Listen, listen. If somebody wants to pull that off with with their wrestlers at a show, I will film it for free. Now, okay, here's okay. the thing: Do you want credit if Paul sees that? Uh, I should tag uh, him with this. Yes, fuck. I'm gonna tag them with it. You know, I let me call you Paul because we're both professionals. <laughs> <Yeah. on them. laughs> he's, 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 he's he's Paul of vast Triple H. If, Paul he, uh, Triple if, H, H, if H sees it, yeah, yeah it'd be yes. great. It, it would be great for him to book it. I would I would I would mark out huge. Yeah, because I guess the birthday cake waffle was like a big meme or something like that. That's why I came up. I know nothing week. about. Uh, that's the funniest yeah, yeah. part is I was just in for waffles. I like the fact that they're a birthday cake is just even better. Listen, I don't know the meme. Look at that thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's 
ridiculous. Somebody said somebody responded to that and says, "Oh man, I'd be down with this if it was pancakes or something." So in in the group when I posted it, so, so. I'm a Waffle House guy, so I'm I'm, I'm waffles over pancakes all day. There you go. Um, I think we hit everybody up here. I don't think there's anybody lurking in the chat room uh, or video. Oh, I didn't check the other ones, but clicks. But in the meantime, just in case, uh, Glenn, it's been fantastic. Uh, what social medias are no, you on? No, let me get my cheap plugs in, baby. Let me get my cheap plugs. All right. So my 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 first cheap plug, I gotta make sure because uh, I gotta keep the lights on. Uh, if you like tabletop hobby games of any kind, but particularly war games, miniatures, painting, toy soldiers, that kind of thing, and also board games, uh, card games, and RPGs, please come to Drawbridge Games. We're located in Castle Shannon. Also, you can check us out at drawbridgegames.com. That'll give you all the details, the address, the whole thing. Uh, and we're on uh, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and all that. Um, but uh, if you want... Some damn good, high-quality wrestling. I'm talking some boss wrestling. Some B-O-S-S wrestling. You need to hit me up. Glenn Spector on Instagram and on Twitter and on Facebook. You can, If you're a promoter out there and you see this and you're like, God, I got to have that guy and who wouldn't want me? Obviously. I'm going to make any show that you put me on 110% better. That is a rock solid Glenn Spector guarantee. Hit me up in the private messages. Email me at Glenn Spector uh, at gmail.com. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody out there. Thank you, Mayhemers. I will be out WrestleMania week. Uh, we'll have cameras out at the 880 at Philly show or takes Philly or whatever they called it. To, what's the error code out there? 880 the, takes the 214 two, or one, something. 215. 215. Yeah. Um, don't show Philly this. Uh, I will also be, uh, I'll be, hang I will be hanging at, uh, allegedly I'll be hanging at the uh, 2300 arena during the stardom show with a camera in hand. Uh, somewhere you probably won't see this, uh, but uh, and then uh, I'll be at WrestleCon, uh, hanging out at Joe Dabrowski's booth, special appearance. Nice. Uh, I'm just covering it. Wait over it. I'm just covering it because he got booked. I'm not booked, bro. So uh, many DVDs, so yeah, many yeah, action so figures, so many action figures. I'm yeah. gonna, you know what? My 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 goal will be if it's still there to make sure that Virgil plushy right. Wrestle Buddy gets sold or buy it for Dude, Riz. Sorg, uh, look, you need look, to look. bring with you. Two white pieces of bread <laughs> in a Ziploc bag. Oh, yes. my God. All right. That's the thing is, I and that is the I only thing you're going to eat on the entire road trip. I'm going to see him tomorrow for this trip, and I don't have white bread. Oh, I have dude, wheat bread. Gotta, I, like, okay, there's I a supermarket right across. Yeah, the street. but it's closed. <laughs> and it'll, yeah, I'll be gone before it's open. So, um, also, I mean, he doesn't eat pizza with a fork, as far as I can remember. So at least there's that there's, yeah. reference there's, to another friend of mine who who is <laughs> hopefully watching this. Oh, uh, and we'll find out who that is on Patreon, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you guys this weekend. Hey, and I'll be around. If anyone wants to catch a drink or something, let me know. Hit me up on the DMs at Sorgatron everywhere. We'll see you guys next time. See you guys in Philly. We'll see if I survive, and we'll be back here at 9 p.m. Eastern next week. Maybe. Probably. I know the password. It's fine. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.